Good morning, Belize, and good morning. I say good morning, Belize, and good morning. And how are you this morning? Welcome back, everybody. Welcome, welcome. This is the morning show here on Love FM, Love Television on this Friday morning. So happy Friday. Happy Friday to you. And happy Friday to you, Tamar. Good morning. Good morning, Belize, and welcome to Friday with Ernesto and Tamar here on the morning show on Love. Um, it's Friday, and so you know what that means. We're, we're starting to prep for the weekend, at least mentally. Right, and it is uh, Holy Week coming up. Yes, Holy next week, week is the, the Holy for Week. The faithful. Mm -hmm. That's for the faithful. It's Holy Week is coming up. And uh, I remember as a little kid growing up, Holy Week used to be a special event. But by that time, school was closed. Mm -hmm. So we wouldn't have any... School would have closed uh, yeah, this, this today. Week, today, yeah. yeah. Last day of classes. So we would do anything for Jesus. <laughs> you know, Love Jesus very much during <laughs> Easter. You get treats. You get treats. You get um, school is out. Yeah, right, a, lot, right. a lot to be... <laughs> thankful for as a kid well this morning speaking of uh, holy week and so on we'll we, this morning our our show will include of course some sports because a lot of things happening coming up uh, the holy week weekend as well the easter weekend we'll be talking sports in the form of uh, the ladies cross country That's coming right. up this weekend and also the ariel rosado foundation they'll be having a ride uh, fundraising ride and a little bit of religion of course that's yes. timely we'll have our friends from the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints telling us about their general conference coming up at this time and we know that this well just normally you use your device your phone a lot we know especially yes. you ladies right mm -hmm. okay <laughs> and uh we we men only use the phone to, to put make ladies' numbers in it. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Now we know. Mm, we know um, but Digi Belize is going to be here, and they're going to tell us about a new feature that they've recently launched. It's mm -hmm. called Digi One, mm -hmm. and you might not know what that is because it's a very new concept. Mm -hmm. And um, yesterday, Ernesto and I was talking about staying up to date with the times and staying abreast of what's happening. So, in terms of technology in Belize, we now have Digi One. Right. So we'll hear more about that a little later on. So stay with us. The Bolita played 62, 62, pick three numbers, 471, 471, Fantasy 5, nobody take it yet. It's still at $275,000, the jackpot. And the numbers are 23, 32, 33, 27, and 26. The free ticket letter is K, as in Karen. Yeah, all mm -hmm. right. Congratulations to everybody who won. If you didn't, I guess we say try again. <laughs> Don't go away. We'll be back. You can chat with us if you wish to. You can join us this morning before we start the formal conversations. We'll have the informal ones yeah. with you. Stay with us. We'll be right back.
Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. The morning show is on here on Love FM, Love Television on this Friday with Tamar and Ernesto. Good things morning, are happening everybody. Welcome back. All over the country. You know, lots of things are happening. I understand another shooting in Tikatla Village. We don't have all the details yet, but uh, we'll be bringing that to you as soon as we can confirm yeah. the details. Uh, cabinet met, well, they meet every Tuesday. Mm -hmm. All the ministers meet and decide how they're going to rule us, you know, yeah. and, and run the country. And one of the big uh, conversations and the big complaints out there is the cost of goods and cost of food. Yeah, but specifically and to climbing and climbing price, and climbing. price gouging. And a lot of it is called price gouging. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the, the us regulars keep saying, well, why you can't go this? Why you can't go that? Well, it's not as easy or simple as it sounds, but no. cabinet trying to appease us, they, um, they met and they will, they are saying they will take measures, including setting up meetings with wholesalers and retailers to ensure that all mm -hmm. understand the urgency of the situation with a view to price control of goods and services, establish the practice of store inspections and monitoring as offered by, well, the unions yeah. have offered that they will do that. I would, um, I'm very interested in seeing how that's going to work. I don't want to be negative here, but um, wouldn't price gouging be difficult to prove? Because if you can justify why the cost is what it is, then right. it's right. just a markup right. from, right. and it's just a result of cost of living. I mean, it's hard to tell where gouging begins and, and, and high cost of living well, well, I think ends. The, the, you're right, because... There are, there, are, there are certain basic items, mm -hmm. you know, that people eat every day. Mm -hmm. And uh, those are where the price gouging is, is, is said. You know, that's like, where it's felt the most. Like, like a simple thing like ramen, mm -hmm. which a lot of people eat, used to sell for 50 cents. Yeah. I don't know what it is now. I think it's a dollar and more. I've heard even two dollars one. Now, that's gouging. Is it? That is, yeah. But what if they yeah. could prove why that this is a new cost? Look. Because gouging would mean, wouldn't it be that if it's gouging, then one store would have it way more than the rest. That, that happens. Yeah. That happens. Mm -hmm. Because persons who have mentioned it to me, and I say, well, go and tell the authorities that this store is selling it, that, that. Mm -hmm. And there will be those cases. Yeah. But when you talk about rice, sugar, and those prices are let increasing me, let, me tell anyway. a, let me tell a little story about a recent supermarket experience I had. Uh -huh. So I was feeling all fancy, and I wanted to make a, a built, I wanted okay, to make a home-cooked meal. When you finish your story, you have to explain to me how... What feeling fancy mean? By the way, oh, go ahead. So, uh, do I not tell you the food? You know, you know agreement. Right. So I wanted to make mashed potatoes and steak with mm -hmm. steamed vegetables. Okay, you cook um, it. It's one of the easiest things. All right. You know, steak. It's very easy to cook potatoes. Okay. Your you know, you know mm -hmm. what it is. Yeah, mashed. <laughs> and um, and so I like to add corn to that plate. The something about the the yellow adds some vibrance to my plate. When right? you mean corn, you mean corn the, on the, the cob. Corn on the cob. Yeah. And um, so I went to my local supermarket, and the price of a tray of corn mm -hmm. with three to four pieces on there was $9. Yeah. $9. And um, I had to walk out. You sell for what before? Like five, well, it's six? The, well, many years ago, mm -hmm. <laughs> in my recollection, it was like three change, at three, maybe $3, yeah. $3.50 yeah. mm -hmm. or something for that same package, that same parcel. Mm -hmm. And it was 9 and I had to walk away from it because... It's it's absolutely ridiculous. Agree, the the, the cost per value it doesn't it doesn't add up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just thought about the fact that you know that's just one item, but I had to walk away from that item. And what's to say that tomorrow there won't be another? Um, but at the same time, well, you I see that, that's not that's not a, a, a regular item that everybody buys. So, true. Right, and but you're it right. Is a you're right. You're proving no, because that that is that is more like gourmet food to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. You're not everybody buys but a lot of At what point or, 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 or was like corn that. luxury item? <laughs> yeah. Right. I guess no, it is. Um, but my point is to say that um, how, how do you prove that it's gouging? And all we can say is. That is a good item to use as an example. And I hope those listening who are going to. That is a excellent. Because, because that is not a run of the mill item that everybody buys. Mm -hmm. So when people complain, they're mm -hmm. not complaining about, about that. Then they complain about the basics. Mm -hmm. but yesterday, a person who works for me came in and had bought a, she loves her canned beef. Mm -hmm. She said, you know this canned beef, I nearly $8. Yeah. 
Yeah. I used to pay four or five for it. Mm -hmm. You know. This this item bothers them, and these are this is canned food, mm -hmm. and those prices will increase because we import them. We will import them again. Another item that many places will be able to prove. Mm -hmm. I have to increase the price like that. Right. Mm -hmm. So. Um, it'll be it'll be a. a, a uh, 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 trial of errors and, and, and tribulations, honestly. And I would imagine too that an exercise like this would be costly to go to, you know, have people, um, you know, pick it. Because how would it work? <laughs> um, would there be a, a trial to determine if you're gouging or well, not? Well, I think the first thing. A tribunal? They what is the, it? They, they, they want to view the price control of goods. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think they can only do that with what we produce here and eat on a daily basis. So we will stick with chicken, rice, beans. When you when you start looking at your, because I think the elote on the street is still a dollar. No, you, uh, sorry. no, it's one fifty now. Right? No, no, it's it's, more? it's um. I haven't bought one in a while, so. I think the reg, maybe like two dollars. Two dollars. There you go. Yeah. There you go. So obviously, and they are buying it. Risky. They don't go to the supermarket and buy it. Well, it's two different brands of corn. One is mm -hmm. like um, sweet corn, and one is. Is the same like, corn? No, the, the, the kernels feel different, though. The kernels elote, are different. The elote is the one that they, they buy it from the same sources. It's the same. They, it's grown here. It's the same corn. It, that, 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 I don't know. I need that to be verified because it, it's, it, it seems it it's bulk. a different taste and texture. So I, I think because it's I different. Because I think they, 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 they prepare it differently. They prepare differently. Okay. Well. Yeah, we need to learn how to boil this thing, and uh -huh. th that's a Central American recipe that, that that's out there. But that's an excellent th one. Mm -hmm. But the one I mentioned also about the corned beef. Mm -hmm. Corned beef, you know that canned product prices have gone through the roof. Well, I'm very proud to say that. Belize. Aside from Salsa Casera, I walk straight past the canned goods <laughs> <laughs> aisle. So. I'm, I'm happy about that because it's filled with nitrates and poor in nutrients. Mm -hmm. So, I nice. mean, I know pe there are people who have to. But oh, they live on that. Yeah. Um, um, patted meat, <coughs> um, uh, Vienna sausage, mm -hmm. canned beef. Yeah. You know, canned they, they, beans they, they, they and canned can, can vegetables, you, know. you name right, it. Right. Well, that's again, but that, you see, that again reaches, that's beyond a lot of people's. Mm -hmm. um, it has, that's what it's become. Right. That hat is become even even from time, but the basics, the basics yeah. as you mentioned, the 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 um the canned beef, yeah, the the Vienna sausage, the you know the potted meat, those it's things are basic foods. You gotta cook up the canned beef, and I like it. You <laughs> find canned beef, it's an egg for me, and put little pepper in there, and it's delicious. Mm -hmm. yeah, but it's come to the point now where fresh beef is cheaper than canned corned beef. Probably is. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, because you could get, you know, a, a few little chops for like a six, seven dollars. Um, and you know the can of canned beef is way more now. And it was expensive to begin with. I would mm -hmm. never buy it. Lunch on meat. Mm -hmm. you, oh, from, yes, from, that was always I mean, a little those pricey. Those for me were always pricey. But that is what people, because of canned beef, you could feed four or five people in it. And uh, the you convenience cook it up too. And you cook it with white rice. Mm -hmm. and it could, right, the convenience. And, it's these, the, and this is where the price gouging comes in now, because they think they're gouging. To me, if anybody needs to be police for price gouging, I would say GOB because look at the price of butane. Well, fuel, yeah. Butane and specifically. Butane. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the fact that it has almost doubled yeah. over the past couple of years. And um, when we were told you nationalize it so the price would be I know. more controlled. Mm -hmm. And it didn't work out that way at all. And we are not, I'm not sure of all the factors that contribute to the well, we can't current control price. control the price abroad. Let, let me, that's a problem with, um, with, with um, things like, let's take fuel for instance. Mm -hmm. You have the, the, the um, OPEC plus people, yeah. the, the out, of, out of the Middle East, like Saudi Arabia, and who is about the largest exporter. They control the price of the snow. We are controlling it. And uh, I'm reading that because of all this climate change and trying to cut down on fossil fuel, mm -hmm. these countries that, that live off fossil fuel right now are going to try and keep the price high because they want to cash in as much as they can, While they can. before it stops selling. And it's going to be a few years down the road yet. Yeah. But they're already using that as an excuse. And many years, the great United States had the power to 
try and control these things. But the U.S. is unfortunately is losing its, its international influence a lot around the world. So now these countries are, are working like Saudi Arabia. Now they decide they are going to just reset link. The U.S. wanted them to, after the Ukraine war, to, 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 to um, increase production, In okay. to drop the price. And they said, no, we're not going to do that. So the price stays where it is, and they control the price now. And you and I, well, our little countries like ours, have absolutely no control over that. And it affects butane, it affects fuel, it affects all these things that are coming into the country. And that, in turn, affects the canned beef shipping. Mm -hmm. From the, 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 the it's increased the, the price to grace, for instance. Mm -hmm. That's where we should, uh, you know, tell our producer try and get someone, like say, from Greece to come in and talk to us about what it costs to bring a can of corned beef to Belize. Is it really gouging? And that's where these people should go who are going to look I, at controlling I think, this inflation. I think um, the, maybe the presence of some kind of control board or something might deter yeah, um, unnecessary price hikes, right? Because you have small, and uh, this is a fact, you have small little shops mm -hmm. that are taking advantage of the situation of the neighborhood. I think that is a fact. Like maybe. The, like the ramen for $2 maybe. and so on. They don't buy it for that, but they say, okay, I increase the price now. I, I, I do believe that. I don't think the big supermarkets are really, they, they are too busy trying to manage and make their money and paying their cost. Mm -hmm. But it's the little shops where the, the poorer people shop. Yeah. I do believe there is some price but the prices at those, going on. It, uh, those businesses will always be higher. There is an additional carriage well, outwards. Thank you. And, and, you know, and they're purchasing from, this, from the supermarkets at almost retail prices. Well, yes and no. I think the, uh, no, I'm going to say about the, the Chinese uh, system of buying groceries. They have their own method. They have a, they have a, they have a supply chain, as far as I know, mm -hmm. that they, they deal with, that they themselves okay. deal with. Um, Supermarkets, like the big ones, the very big ones, they buy from everybody, if you notice. You know, I think, um, I think that very little will change in terms of the high prices of goods, even with this measure. And so it's easier, it might be easier to accept that cost of living is what it is. And it, you notice it never goes down. Look, chicken just gone up. It never, it, the prices chicken never go down. Up, so, yeah. yeah. And that is our mean, that's what we buy. Mean and and I think more like neck and back one sell now. Well, I, I don't have no problem. With that. I love neck and back. Do so. you? Oh yes, man. I love my bone. How about how often will you will you be satisfied with that on a weekly basis? Most of the week, I don't have no problem. Okay. After when we cook at home, they, my cook already knows. Mm -hmm. They then could buy any other pieces of the chicken, but you have to have neck and back in the dish. <laughs> Okay, that's for you. Cook. It could be escabeche, it could be relleno, it could be rice and beans, it could be no matter. I okay. want my neck and back and foot. Okay, I mean, yeah. I mean, I ask about the foot then, but I never. <laughs> <laughs> um, and also, it's important to note that depending on where you live in this country, cost of living does mm, vary. Vary. Um, because you think the item that, that can't be to PG cost more, right? That's what they're saying. But, and not only that, it's just the way of life in other parts, of, in different parts of the country is different because sometimes when I tell my mom about prices in the supermarket, she's like, she's stunned because, mm -hmm. um, yes, they do their grocery shopping either in Orange Walk or Billy City, mm -hmm. but they maybe shop once every two months. They're mm -hmm. stuck up and they go home and, and they live a lot. They, they get their, their maybe their fresh produce um they get it from the farm well they don't have a farm but no, they, they, they buy from, from local uh -huh. right. um fish for example is less than half the price per pound wow. um in in, in at least yeah areas. um fr you know you got a lot of cattle that is um butchered right there and sold and it's it's a whole different price point there you go. And also, there's, they always say village life is, is the best life because mm -hmm. of the fact that you always have some fresh fruits. So you, you're not, you're not starved, the village. Yeah, I agree. But there are so many, uh, you know, I agree with you. It's, it's not an easy task. There are so many indicators and factors that, that, that affect your pricing. Mm -hmm. When the government says we increase the, 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 um, the minimum wage of $5, mm -hmm. I have a business or I'm here. That $5 is going to affect my bottom line. It will. It so will. if I was thinking maybe before that, you know what, I'll try to keep my price steady. The first thing that happens is, no, 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 I'm sorry, my price has to go up. Mm -hmm. Hello, caller. Good morning. You're on the air. 
Good morning. Um, uh, are you guys talking about price gouging? No? Yes. Yeah. And, and Tamar asks, where does it start? And I'm going to tell her where it starts. Mm -hmm. I live down south and I shop in Independence mostly. And I, like, pretty much every week I buy, like, um, let's say I'll get one, one item, for instance, coffee cream out of red and white coffee mm -hmm. cream. Mm -hmm. In January, and I got, I keep all the cans just for proof, you know, the, the containers. Wow. Mm -hmm. In January, it was the, the, the 16 ounce one. In January, it was 595. Uh, two weeks ago, it was seven ninety five, oh. and last week, actually one week ago, it was seven ninety five, and last week it went up to nine fifty. Wow! Now, if that's not price gouging, I don't know what is, and that's just one item I could name like many more because I keep all my receipts for comparison. Mm -hmm. But these Asian stores. I don't know if they're doing the same down in Belize City, but I'm telling you, down here, they're really putting on. I mean, every mm -hmm. single week, the mm -hmm. stuff go up. I mean, I could understand 50 cents, you know. Between I agree. The, I agree with you, Carla, 100%. 50 shillings to 50 cents. Yeah. I mean, I could understand that, but $2 in a one week, brother? Come on. Obviously, that, yeah. That, that, that I that feel, is I feel your man. I, I, I agree. This looked at because this isn't just what people to raise prices to um, make up. Are, are you buying? Are you buying from prices. a big, big supermarket or or a, or a, yeah, yeah, a, yeah, yeah I buy from a big supermarket. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I notice prices change on a weekly basis. You know the little price every guns they have yeah. that week, have to stay loaded. Every yes. week. I mean, I go on a stand thing. Go, up, you know, if if you go up ten cents a week, fifteen cents a week, shilling a week. I mean. You could kind of understand a shilling kind of on a steep side a, a buy, a, a per week. But when you talk about something to go up $2 or more in a one week, then something wrong with that. I, I don't know, just go up in a one that week. one got up by $2? Right. Next week, next week you're going up on next dollar. Yeah, yeah. So and I, and I think, I think the, trick, the trick is there that they pick items like that one. Yes, to, to yes. They pick items like that because it's a... It's, it's, not, a, it's a non-essential, yeah, maybe. It's a non-essential yeah. and you will buy it. So they, 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 they put it there. Yeah, they really do a thing on here, man. Like, um, I hear the government talking about trying to do something about price golden. Mm -hmm. They better start doing it real quick because this stuff is like... Not it's like way out there, man. The prices are getting out of hand, yeah. and I, I have yeah. my receipts to prove. I keep my receipts just for comparison to mm -hmm. see how much they're going up every week. So it's it's not a good thing. I hope they do something about it. On, a, on another note, Ernesto, I know you've had the the African experience. Yeah. <laughs> have you ever seen the? Um, have you ever been to to the Ivory Coast? No, not the Ivory Coast, no. Okay, no. have you ever seen a dance they call Zauli? Uh, no. I mean, um, if this it is like, I mean, if you see that, it's, you think, if, if you just turn on the TV and start looking at it, you think it's... I mean, Dangriga. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I've seen, I've everything. seen that. They even have the costumes with the mask, yeah, except... Yeah, everything. And the they, guys, and um, put a, the mask is like a beautiful girl right mm -hmm. and, and they have the shells around really their legs and everything yeah you. i've seen that but i've seen guys that make, these guys make um, michael jackson moonwalk look like <laughs> baby, like like a baby like a man <laughs> very true because they i mean they they do the junk kind of thing where they they, uh -huh. they stamp uh -huh. on it but they do it so fast and yes they yes the girl, you don't even know how they move man I'm i agree <laughs> i i've seen it i've seen it no no i've seen i i've seen it I think All I, right, I, 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 I then you got another one from Uganda where mm -hmm. I call a choli. Mm -hmm. That one is straight up punta. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it's like I mean, what's these answer? If you don't realize that you're watching somewhere else, you think you're in Dangriga or PG or whatever. No, no, whatever no that you religion. know that you mentioned that but caller. I, I always I wondered why. How come we know here more African pop DJs and pop stars? in belize right I from our from our black from our black djs I, I have a huge collection i one time i was in amsterdam and i went to a um, museum 
Um, it, it had like a whole de- section about Africa, and they were playing this music, and I'm like, hold on, that's not like Punta or, um, you know, Paranda or something. And I went to, to the lady up at, at the reception, and she told me, oh, um, you could buy it. I bought a whole collection. I bought like 30 CDs. Mm. Yeah, it was like three, wow. three ten packs. But I'm, I'm talking I'm about modern like modern um, DJs and artists out of Africa, for instance. They have some awesome music. Awesome oh, yeah. music, and, and yeah. our 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 DJs yeah. could learn a lot from that. Get away a yeah. little bit from this Caribbean. Agreed. Uh, Ag- yeah, we, totally we they agreed. have some awesome African music. The DJs, oh, boy, the yeah. artists, mm-hmm. they great. My, um, African music. Uh, my neighbors, they want to know which which punda artist. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it's serious. I mean, the, the, is the comparison is like outstanding. You know. Yeah, it's, for sure. Yeah, they got they got some great music, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyway, those ones. Okay. Information. Well, you you have to, you have to start use real milk in your um, coffee. I stop using yeah, cream. I think, man. It seems like real milk uh, costs no, less. I, I don't I don't stop. I actually I buy cow milk direct from the Mennonite. Correct. And they Straight make they make, it, they make it they make it now. You could it, the UHT. Yeah, I got I got <clears> some. <throat> no, I never use the the, the US. See what I use the, the straight up cold milk for the Mennonite so I squeeze right for the Well, well, that, that one day you have to drink it fast. Okay, spile for you if you don't drink it fast. Yeah, yeah, I know. I buy it fresh. I, yeah. And come like every couple of days. So I buy milk pack and that's what I use. Okay, sir. Thank you for the input. All right. You, yeah, man. All right. You guys will take care. Take Bless care. Take care. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. Yeah, this yeah. Is, that's what it's this forcing us to do, changing the way we eat, changing our lifestyle. You have to do that, yeah. Yeah? yeah. Well, I've, Substitutions. I've, but, but it's true. I, I, it's only myself and my wife I, I shop for. A few months ago, a year ago, I could stock up with $50, $60 with the basics. I believe I said, you. No, man. I look for hit $100 now. So I tell her you only eat one meal a day now, girl. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can afford. <laughs> hmm. Alrighty. Well, that that was. Um, let's see what will come out of this uh, exercise on trying to control the gouging. Yeah. But there are areas where I think it, th- there is there's go- gouging going on. But on the most part, the price of item. I mean, in the U.S., they are complaining about they're using the same word mm-hmm. that they are being gouged. Yeah. My daughter says I went I buy tomato last week and this week I got the tomato price guy. And this is why high. I feel like it's hopeless because it's happening everywhere, everywhere. from Corozal to PG mm-hmm. to in the US, everywhere. Mm-hmm. Definitely. All right, it's seven o'clock. We'll take a break. We'll be back with our first guest this morning. We'll be talking about the ladies cross country, am I right? That's right. Uh women's cross country cycling classic. Don't go why anywhere. Do you, women who ride are not ladies? Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
This is The Morning Show with Ernesto and Tamar coming to you live from our studios here in Belize City, wherever you are. Thank you for joining us. Welcome and joining back. us, we have two guests in studio. Tamar, you want to... Yes, we are welcoming Alan Awil. He's the General Secretary of the Belize Cycling Association and Miss Brenda Pascasio Garnett. And she's here to tell us about Puma's sponsorship and participation in this year's Women's Cross-Country Cycling Classic. Good morning and welcome. Morning. Morning, morning. All right, well, we, we see the ad. The ad has been running and it's being, the race is being promoted. Um, so, I mean, what can you tell us about the lineup for the Women's Cross Country Cycling Classic 2023? About the lineup? Well, first, let me just tell you that, you know, everybody knows about cross country. Mm -hmm. um, it's a big tradition, started in 1928. Um, but we just want to make everybody know that there are three cross countries now. There's a junior, and we're in the middle of it. So literally, we're in the middle and of the it. the junior was last weekend. The, jun the junior was last weekend. Mm -hmm. and, and, and this week is, is the women. So we're, we're really excited to partner with, with Puma. When did uh, the women's cross country start? When, when was it introduced? What is Not the, um, in 1929. They weren't allowed to. No, no, no. Then. I believe the first one was may have been 19, it was 1990 or 1991. I, I'm not, okay. I'm not exactly sure. I think we're at the 42nd, is it? 32nd, 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 32nd running. Okay. But of course, there were two years mm -hmm. um, that, you know, due to COVID, it that it was not held. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you asked for the lineup. I can, I can tell you we have, we have four Belizeans and six foreign riders in the race. So we're what? looking at 10. We're looking at 10. It's not a what, it's a race. Six, 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 six foreign riders and four Belizean? Yes. And it'll be, number? it'll be exciting. It's not, it's not, it's not about, um, we just want to put off an exciting race, Ernesto. Uh, we want to have, we want to have a race with some good competition. I and, so I, and I think, and I think that that's what is going to happen. Uh, I, I'll go through the list. I guess, I guess people might not be familiar with the, the list. Is on the, screen. The, the list is on the screen, but they might not be familiar with the foreign riders. Um, Mariana Valdez is a teammate of Kaya on her LA Sweat team. Uh, Jessica Chong is an American. Um, Katie Sorrell from the Cardinals team is the defending champion. So actually, oh yeah, she's a defending champion. Katie is a defending champion. She won last year. She was tentative up until a few days ago because she wanted to come with her teammate and the teammate crashed in a race three weeks ago. And all of a sudden, you know, Katie didn't want to come on her own. She felt that, you know, she, she wanted to travel with her friend, uh, but, but she came around and she'll be landing on Belize soil today. Jessica is already in the country. Kathleen Conyers is a Bermudan. Oh, okay. Uh, I was going to ask you what country is that? She's a very high-level Bermudan. Mm -hmm. She races all around the world, uh, not just in Bermuda and not just in the Caribbean. And then and the two, um, Ana Laura Garcia and Diana Valeria Rodriguez. A Mexican. They are from Aguascalientes in Mexico. Yeah. You're right. This is and, an interesting race. <laughs> and those, so, you know, we have competition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that and, is cool. And, yeah, and the Belizeans. Well, you Chavaria, could actually, you could actually sisters, call this an international it is. Oh, yeah. race. And that's, this what one was, is, yeah. that's what we want. This, this is an international race. And we were hoping for more, so. Do you know if any of the, 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 um, the foreign riders have ever gone up against any of our top riders who are participating this year? Yes, they have. Okay. Um, well, Catalin, mm -hmm. Catalin Conyers, is a Bermudan. She, she, being from Bermuda, she participates in Central American Caribbean Games. Well, not Central American, but if they're joined, uh -huh. which they have been 
recently Central America and Caribbean together or if they're Caribbean Games and also at Pan Am Championships uh, and I think at Commonwealth Games she, she, she attends on behalf of her country uh, Bermuda and she has met Kaya and uh, Alicia our president at those games you know Alicia was a racer as well um, so they have competed they haven't um, I don't think they've competed in other races other than these what you call like Olympic sanctioned mm -hmm. events but but Kaya and Alicia are familiar with her yeah how, how are we well Kaya is uh, Belizean rider, the first name that pops up to me, and Kaya, she's been there before, and a winner. Uh, how, how are Patricia, Paulita, and Kedisha rating? They've been, they've been in training for several months, so I believe they're in good form. They've been participating in all the races since, since the 1st of January. And, um, and I know they also, Kedisha, she races with the men, in, in some of the club races, there's there's weekend warriors club club races, and there's another club called Guns that she participates in. Um, Paulita and Patricia they, they race up in Kaya when they have races in that area, mm -hmm. and they are the same way we have we have our weekend warriors here. They're similar clubs, clubs Kaya Road Ridge in the San Ignacio area, mm -hmm. and they race there. So. They've been racing. They've all been racing. Actually, it, there's more question mark right now about Kaya than about them. <coughs> okay. Um, we're we're going to talk to Miss uh, Brenda in a, in a bit, but before I... Um, what, um, what does Puma sponsorship mean to, mean to the race, to the, um, especially to the uh, Women's Cross Country Cycle Classic? It's big for us. It, it, it allows us to give uh, type of prize commensurate with, with the caliber of race that cross country is. We think that cross country is big and we want it to be big and we couldn't have it big without, without the participation of Puma Energy. And so we want it to be a big event and um, it allows us to give uh, $3,000 for first, $1,500 for second, $1,000 for third. We have other prizes as well. We have a we have a what we call a category four and five prize which would which Kaya may not qualify for but the other girls in the race do. The four or five prize means that they, they are they are categorized within within the cycling a, a little bit lower than, than Kaya and the, the, the foreign riders don't qualify mm -hmm. for that. It allows us why to pay for. Why is that? Mm -hmm. Because they're not category four and five. They they are. Well, I'm not sure they're, what category four They're more five junior mean. riders. Huh? When when you get in, a novice is categorized as a five. Okay. And then you graduate to four, three, two, one. Got based it. on. So they're more. Based on results, advanced. not not based on experience, but based on results. I think the only the only jump based on experience is from five to four. All. All first time entries into cycling are we, we categorize them as five. So you know that's a novice, a first year rider. Mm -hmm. After a rider has completed a, a year and participated in events, they graduate to um to cut four. And after that you need you need to prove you you need to gain points to move up from four to three and then three to two and then two to one and you gain points by Placing high in races. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Garnett, as a, as a sponsor of this race, as rep representing Puma, who is a sponsor of the race, um, how do you feel about the lineup and caliber of riders that are participating this year? I, I, we're super excited. Uh, when we sat down with, with Alan and Alicia and they told us their plans, you know, and they really wanted to, to take the race and cycling for women in Belize to the next level. And when they spoke about all the development programs that they have in terms of not just the race, you know, for cross country, but developing the program from young girls straight into adulthood um, for the women in Belize, you know, that's what really caught her attention. And it was a no brainer at that point. So um, we were committed right away. And um, 
just by them, you know, raising the, the level of participants in this race shows that, you know, they're being true to, to what they say they want to do. And so for us, you know, it, it just makes a lot of sense um, to sponsor this race. And particularly, I wanted to say in Women's Month to make this commitment, you know, to the women of Belize that, you know, Puma um, sees the development of women in cycling and development of women in Belize as critical. And so we want to, to show our support. So we're excited and thankful that, you know, they're being true to what they said they were going to do. Right. And I wasn't aware that this was Women's Month, by the way. Oh, dear. Where were you? I'm, I'm not a woman. I'm, I'm <laughs> oh, my dear. Oh, boy. Hmm. Why not take away the sponsorship? Okay. Oh, get lashing from yeah. away. <laughs> yes. We won't take away the sponsorship, but I think this is even more important. You know, the reason yeah, why we're, 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 we're doing this, this kind of... It's actually the last day of Women's Month, by yeah, the way. Exactly. The exactly. Mm. So it, yeah. is a, it is a significant commitment. Um, for us, and it's aligned with our mission, you know, of energizing the communities where we operate. Well, you know, I will. Since you 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 didn't know, you now have to big up at least three women, right now, <laughs> 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 to make up for it. <laughs> Lucky you never tell you fifty. I have I have a wife and uh, I think four daughters, so I'll big okay. up. I'll big up. Five, not, not three. No All one, right. Not. You're, you're redeemed. <laughs> you have know, four daughters? So nothing should scare you. Right? Unless I lose count. <laughs> <laughs> Every day is Women's Day for you then. Yeah, yeah. that's what yeah. it is. That's right. Yeah. So you're, 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 but you're you, know, you know what, what, what Brenda mentioned too about developing um, the sport? What we want to do is to, you know, have, have youth, have, have cycle center at the youth level and nurture them, teach them, and let them gradually gain experience, increase in their ability and in the distance that they race. And the level of competition we're bringing in really is an advertisement for that because the kids will see that and say, that's what I want to be. So the higher the level, I think it's more, <coughs> it's something more to look at and see heroes and to see uh, what somebody would want to achieve in the future, I would want to be as good as that and be able to, to go international, become a pro. Um, so we see it as a good thing to bring, is it to bring high level competition. Alan, is that easier to do nowadays than it was a few years ago to a young woman wants to be a writer? Well, we talk about young women right now, like Kedisha for instance. What, what's her chance of, how much does she have to put into it to you know, become they, international? The same way these Mexicans and Americans, and where from? Which are, which are? Bermuda. Bermuda yeah. are coming here. <clears throat> we can go and ride there as well. Is it easier to do nowadays, the whole well, There's always networking? the cost of travel, though. I mean, the main thing is, is traveling, and if you have a job and the races are, you know, there's a race, every week if you want to go if you if you have the means to travel to it but okay but then our people tend to have a job mm -hmm. and so they can't ask their boss every week to take off because there's a race in um, Guatemala or Panama or or Puerto Rico so that's it you know having a full-time job is certainly a hindrance um, if they were a way to to be able to allow our top athletes, not just in cycling, but maybe in other sports as well. Um, time off to travel in order to, to get better, to gain experience, to gain high level competition that maybe isn't available. Just they would really need to be sponsored. They would need to be sponsored. And, and so we would have to have um, maybe something in the law to, to help accommodate that. Well, somebody I, I has to sponsor them. But, you know, finances is the main thing. People yeah. need to, um, yeah. I guess, we need to support what our does families. What Cathy Sorrell do? Well, let's ask her. <laughs> on the <laughs> ask her. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think Cathy Sorrell is a pro. Um, I think she rides on a club similar to to what our girls do. Well, being part of that club probably finances yeah. her movements and yeah. helps her. The, the, difference, the difference is in 
Guatemala and Mexico and in the United States, the difference is population. Mm -hmm. So where we That's have, and again, this is why we wanted to bring in more, more foreign riders because our population of women cyclists was small. We needed to. No, I think this is a we good. Needed I actually increase, like this. I, I, we I needed think to watch this more the than the men's one. Yeah, but we actually have four countries. Yeah. Racing against each other, though, you know. Well, some of these and Americans aren't going to be teammates, you know. I mean, keep that in mind. They're okay. not, you know. Uh, they were right against each other. Of course. Yes, of yeah, course. Well, th they didn't come, they didn't come yeah. together. They're, yeah. they're not, they're, yeah. they're, they're not going to be I mean, here to share the prize. But what I'm saying, you know, I'm looking at it, and this is interesting. It's nothing wrong with rooting then for some... You but know, for but what, what I was saying though is that the, the population being larger means there's also a larger population of cyclists. Mm -hmm. And so you can be in a club similar to what our girls are mm -hmm. and be a member of the local association similar to what our federation does in Belize. But when you go to a race for the women, it might be 15 or 20 girls. They still don't have the same level in, in women as they do in men. Mm -hmm. Just like, you know, it's the same situation mm -hmm. for us. But their small numbers in women, mm -hmm. maybe 10 to 20, mm -hmm. whereas our small numbers is three to f three or four. Mm -hmm. So when they get into those races with uh, more numbers, then you, get, you have better competition. And so you improve by, with the competition. <coughs> Let's talk about the, the date and, and route of the race. Well, I think, I think, um, I'm sorry, well, the road, the start time and, and, and route. The race starts at 8 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Oh, it starts Where's later than the men's one? Yes. Okay. Half the distance. And so we want it to be um, finishing more or less about the same time mm -hmm. that the men's do starts at 8 o'clock in San Ignacio yeah. and, and heads into Belize City. Where in San Ignacio will it start from? Columbus Park. From the, by the police, the police station? Mm -hmm. No. Right in front, correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, now I asked a question because the, the change in men's one, now there's a circle through San Ignacio and that boosts the, the ratings and the people come out and see. I thought maybe they should have done the ladies do that circle first so they didn't come in, you know. Because it will leave San Ignacio in a minute. They'll be gone. It's a good idea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a good idea. Because uh, I, th I think doing the men's one like that, San Ignacio loves it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. because more people come out and they see it and you know, prepare for it. That's so why it was a good idea, you know. How do we watch? We'll have it on mm -hmm. live stream on our Facebook page. And um, and that's how you watch the Cycling Federation of Belize Facebook page. Mm -hmm. We'll have it live. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The the does any betting occur on these sporting events? You know, I mean, I don't know if it's I, legal. Brenda, do you have a bet on? For <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure myself and my boss were just betting that all Belizeans will win. <laughs> <laughs> No, because I'm asking, oh. uh, come, come to think of it, we are looking at this as an international race and we have the defending champion. Yeah. Is she still the favorite? I don't know that she is. Um, I, 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 I don't want to place odds. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to place odds on the race. But I don't even know if betting is, is that sort of betting that's is legal. That's what, that's what you might, that's what you might be asked me to incriminate that, myself. That's, <laughs> myself. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. But, but, I mean, I, I, I don't bet, you know, all, all, you, all joke you, aside, but, no, there is, there is no agree. organized agree. betting. But, but, you know, but between yourselves, friendlies and so on. Um, but that, what I'm trying to get at is there a favorite? Is there a, are we looking at this and saying, okay, you, you guys are the experts, you know, who's riding, what the experiences they have, where they come from, how familiar you are with these riders. Mm -hmm. And to say, well, you know, this, this one has a chance, stats. I want to have a chance. Oh. I'll speak about the foreign riders. Uh -huh. And I believe that the lady from Bermuda is very good. Um, and I believe that at least one from Aguascalientes, the Mexican, mm -hmm. uh, I believe she's also uh, high level, both of them may be, but I'm, I'm confident that at least one is going to be a high level cyclist. 
and Jessica Chong. Um, I, I think she has good credentials. I think they are better than Katie Sorrell. Uh, that mm. is my honest opinion. They are better than the No, this race is going to champion. be an interesting race. Mm -hmm. This is going and to be a Kaya, really interesting race. Yeah, Kaya, Kaya actually, Kaya has an advantage because she has one of her professional, you know, Kaya is the first yes. Belizean to sign a professional contract. Mm -hmm. um, actually, she did it ahead of the, the male rider, Oscar Kiros, who subsequent to Kaya signed a contract. He still hasn't joined his team. That's to happen, I think, after Holy Saturday. Uh, Oscar should join his pro team in Miami. Uh, so Kaya beat him, beat him to it. Mm -hmm. uh, but Kaya has an advantage because she has an LA Sweat teammate here as, to work okay. for her, Mariana Val Valades. Okay, she'll work as a teammate. She's a teammate yeah. of Kaya. Yeah. She's a teammate on her pro, on her pro team. Okay, and so. Uh, you know, she uh, has that, that one advantage. She's Mexican American. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Brenda might might know who the favorites for the Belizeans are. So I'm, I spoke about the foreigners. Mm -hmm. But I think maybe Kaya. I think I, I, Kaya, Kaya would be Kaya the favorite. Is, is always Belizeans. a favorite. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just her, her track record alone mm -hmm. and her passion. Mm -hmm. um, and that's yeah. the name that everybody knows. But I think at the end of the day, as Belizeans, you know, when we get there in our hearts, we just want a Belizean to win. Mm -hmm. yeah. But again, um, you know, we appreciate all the foreign riders and their expertise and the, the level they're going to help us raise the bar, you know. And, when we, and when, we invite, when we invite cyclists, when we invite anybody to participate, you know, they, it's open for them to win. We can't yeah. invite people and, yeah, and then no, no, tell yeah. them. And vex on yeah, the and vex on the <laughs> I, tell, I tell somebody last night, it's like having a party, inviting friends and tell them, well, I invite you to my party, but you can't get nothing at the bar. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can't okay. have as much fun as the Belizean. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can't have as much fun. So, uh, Paulita yeah, and it, Patricia, are they siblings? They are. They are. They are. Okay, yes, Paulita is the younger one. Paulita is 20. Patricia, I'm not and sure. They are, I'm sure they're hungry, the so yeah. they're going out for yeah. that. Are they riding as a team or? No, no. they actually ride separately. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> this would be interesting, this one. Yeah. They actually this do be ride separately. Race. They have because because they have separate sponsors, and yeah. so they do ride separately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And actually, I had I had mentioned ten minutes ago that Kaya might be a bigger concern than than the others. Uh, actually, the reason is that, that she was recuperating from a crash herself. She crashed mm -hmm. in, um, I believe it was the Alfred Parks Memorial Race. Okay. She crashed and, and cracked two ribs. And so since then, she hasn't been in any races. She took two weeks off to recover, and then she's been training. Just training. Uh, but not, she hasn't been in a race since then. Um, but I spoke to her last night. Last night, we had a introduction of, of the riders mm -hmm. and um, I spoke to her and she says she's she's she ready. ready she's ready I hope Kedisha I hope she's ready too yeah, I ready. hope all of them are ready yeah, yeah. no I mean um, <laughs> you know anything of her she is she has ridden one cross country before but she's been racing for uh, a handful of years um, she's a strong rider and she she actually gets into the guns club races and weekend warriors races and she holds her own she stays with the with the main bunch so uh, so is, is, i think she's strong so kai yeah. is the only one with a teammate yes okay the only belizean with a teammate i think the, the two, two other ladies Mexicans from are the two ladies from aquas calientes are teammates, are teammates. So. okay so you have two correct. teams all the others are riding on their on yeah the, on, on the, on the road. independently correct Again, what we call in cycling we say we call them lone rangers, lone rangers. okay <laughs> <laughs> this is going no this is going to be an interesting race really yeah. this has an international feel to it and you know Correct. you have quality women racers are here yes so it's i, I have to follow this one mm -hmm. and good prizes so they, they're going to fight all the way to the line and you have station prizes along the way there are station prizes <coughs> along the way i can't list all of them um but there are station prizes along the way and actually just yesterday evening we got um I got two contacts yesterday 
in the afternoon and into the evening uh, individuals who want to put up special prizes or you know one of them wasn't an individual I'm sorry one of them was was Bell Trade uh, mm. they want to put up a thousand dollars for the first Belizean so even if the mm. I may be speaking prematurely mm. because but they've 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 put it already in writing that this will happen mm -hmm. uh, but we should have a special prize at the end for the first Belizean so even if there's a fair that the foreigners go with the big prizes. It's going to be a fast, exciting race. That's a good but, motivation, I think. Yeah. But Belizean, Belizean so this, in addition to our special Cat 4 5 prize, there's also um, money at the end for, or a prize at the end, mm. I should say, for the first Belizean. Well, that's special. a good idea. Yeah. I that's, think that's so. That is a good idea. I, uh, nothing wrong with that. I mean, you know, yeah. to give these girls motivation to keep riding mm -hmm. yeah. and to do it, definitely. Yeah. Already, and then this is a uh, World Cup towards the big one next week, or the bigger one, because I... I hope I'm in studio next week to talk yeah. about that one. <laughs> so we, we don't, we're not going to talk about the men. Today is about the women. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. It's going to be fun. And thanks to Puma for, <clears throat> like they said, put your money where your mouth is, and helping the ladies to move forward. Tomorrow you could ride next year. I'm not that good. The only <laughs> the only bicycle riding um, practice I have is on beach cruise. Like you know, when I ride mm -hmm. a beach. Well, used to that's a start, you know. That's yeah, called that's a start. start yeah. Oh yeah? yeah. You used to ride a crooked tree, of and climb tree, and all that. So you supposed to be okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, quite good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, that would be that. I think um, it would be a good opportunity to. Well, not not competitively. I'm not. Come on, I'm not anywhere near that level. Oh. But um, it would be great exercise and a good experience on the road. But yeah, we want to say thank you to both of you for being here this morning, Mr. Alan Awil, General Secretary of the Belize Cycling Association, and of course, Ms. Brenda Pascasio Garnett, um, here representing Puma today. Thank you so much for being here. Um, we have to take a break now, and uh, when we come back, we'll be talking about the Ariel Rosado Foundation. And uh, but you just send me a question to ask you, but I have to ask you up here. <laughs> okay. All right. Don't go anywhere, guys. We'll be right back. Good morning. A moderate easterly airflow prevails over the area. The 24-hour forecast is for mostly sunny and warm conditions today and clear to partly cloudy skies tonight. Fair weather will prevail with little or no rain expected. High temperatures today will peak near 87 degrees Fahrenheit along the coast, 92 inland and 80 in the hills. Low temperatures tonight will range from 80 degrees Fahrenheit along the coast, 71 inland and 66 in the hills. Winds over the open sea will continue to blow generally from the east at 10 to 20 knots and sea conditions will be choppy to moderate. High tide will occur at 7.34 this morning followed by low tide at 9 minutes after 12 this afternoon. The sun will set at 5 minutes after 6 this evening and will rise at 5.47 tomorrow morning. The moon will rise at 1.45 this afternoon and will set at 6 minutes after 3 tomorrow morning. The outlook for Saturday and Saturday night is for mainly fair and warm weather to prevail. In this morning's fire risk forecast, the risk for brush or forest fires will be moderate to high during the next 24 to 48 hours. And in this week's sargasm update, latest observations showed a slight decrease in sargasm, mainly over northern areas. However, there is still a medium chance that more mats could drift to the shore during the next few days. That ends this morning's weather report and the forecast from the National Meteorological Service. Smart introduces real unlimited postpaid plans, providing customers with unlimited talk, unlimited text, and unlimited data. Now that's a real great deal. With Smart Plus, Share 1 and 2, and Enterprise 1 and 2 plans, you can talk as much as you want, text as much as you want, and for the first time ever in Belize, you can enjoy unlimited data with your postpaid plan. So come in and sign up for an unlimited postpaid plan and enjoy limitless possibilities. 
In addition, other plans such as the Flex Junior, Choice and Select have been boosted with a lot more talk, text and data, providing you with the best value for your budget. Be unlimited with Smart. It's time to power your dollar with Smart. like Kohler, welcome GE Appliances, welcome Oran Windows, welcome tiles from around the world, welcome Sherwin Williams Paint and Coating. Visit us today at mile 3 on the Philip Golden Highway or call us at 223-3768. Design Depot. All in one place. The future of water is now. Secure your future today with pure, refreshing, great tasting drinking water. Produced on site in your home and office. Using a reverse osmosis water purification system from Filter Pure Solutions. So take control of your precious resources and filter your own water. To request a quote, call us at 223 0001. Message us on Facebook or visit our website at filterpure.bz to learn more. FilterPure Solutions. This is the future of water. Get ready for fantastic discounts from now through to September 30th. Venice is having store-wide discounts on tools, paints, appliances, Plumbing and electrical products, lights and fans, household items, and much, much more. Visit a Venice store near you to enjoy fantastic discounts from now through to September 30th. Only at Venice. Quality and savings.
Welcome back, everybody. The morning show continues here. We're at, uh, let me see the time here, Tamar. It's 19 minutes away from 8 o'clock. Welcome and back, we, everybody. They, we, well, we continue talking about, uh, it is a seasonal riding. Yes. It is riding season in, in our Cycling country. Cycling season. It's cycling season. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've, uh, in fact, out of that tradition, we now have the Ariel Rosado Foundation. Right. And the details, if you don't know, we'll talk about that a little bit this morning. Mm -hmm. But the but representing the foundation is Leticia Wesby. Good morning. Good morning. And joining her is Kenrick Richards. Good morning. morning so you're the vice president and chairperson of the ride committee. That's right. An important job, man. <laughs> you know how to ride on bicycle? Of course. Well, just, just to check. <laughs> Are you a racer yourself? I used to. Okay. Um, well, before we start to talk about the race, can you uh, maybe give us a little history about the Ariel Rosado Foundation and what it is you do? Okay, good morning, everybody. Um, as you all know, Ariel Rosado was a cyclist, um, very um, well known. Well known, mm -hmm. and basically, he's fortunate. He has um, he was basically studying, and he has just completed his studies and about to get his law degree, and where he and his best friend. Um, Marlon Castillo, you know, they, I mean, we're, they're all young, went out and unfortunately there was a crash that they got involved and he passed away as a, uh, mm -hmm. but to keep the memory of their child alive, Dr. Um, Derla and Alvaro Rosado um, came, got together with some friends and started the Ariel Rosado Foundation. The idea of the Ariel Rosado Foundation is to encourage youths to, to stay in sports as well as to basically work towards getting an education. So they, with friends and family, they, and basically later we went to corporate sponsors to provide scholarship for um, young students to complete high school. Mm -hmm. um, going to high school does not mean that we want to see star students. Most, there's many criteria for um, when you're granted a scholarship, you have to maintain a certain mm -hmm. grade. Mm -hmm. um, but based on the challenges, and Dr. Derla is a, a trained psychologist, and um, counselor and so we know that certain challenges um, particularly looking at the social impact have on kids and it impacts in their schoolwork mm -hmm. and um, the the idea was just get them through high school that's because a, that's that an makes idea. that yeah. makes that's that a, makes a difference for them you, you get your you education yeah get your education and at least you get a job a decent job to help you better yourself so right. that was that's the objective students make it to the top you know exactly you know, a lot of students out there who are average mm -hmm. yeah like me Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. No, no. So that was the the idea is basically for them to get through high school to change mm -hmm. their life, change what they, their past is, and make it you better just have for to them. Pass. Exactly. It was just yeah. have to yeah. pass. Yeah. You have to um, do your best. The, do, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so that's where we started to um, twelve years ago, and basically we are doing this is our eleventh annual um, fundraising ride. The objective of the ride is using the sport that Ariel loves to um, raise funds. We have participants um, paying to, to be part of the event and we use that towards our foundation um, objectives. Mm -hmm. And also we use to highlight what we're doing and getting um, asking for more corporate sponsor as well as for individual or family sponsorship where we ask families, people do it in memory of their loved one as well as people do it in reference to we can afford and um, we can sponsor a child. We are looking at something an average of $1,200 per child. And also I want to say it's not um, specific, specific school. If a child, based on their educational ability, get accepted in St. Catherine's, Palote, St. John's, any of the school that people consider are they, you know, it's only for certain persons, no, as long as the child have that educational ability. Right, it could be any high school. Any high yeah. school, any high school yeah. that they have. They, they can, they can yeah. get a scholarship to go yeah. to that. So don't limit themselves and saying, you know what, I can't afford, and you know what, my child might not afford, and I'll be able to continue. We're here as an organization to help um, support how that many, How many young people are helping right now? Right now we have 25, 29 scholars. There you go. Wow. And two 29. at Galen University. 29. Yeah. 
29 is going. The Red yeah. Yeah. That's incredible. The, yeah. that, the fund, that means the fund has grown. Yes. Yeah, we are growing, and um, w this is what we want. We want to maintain the ability to continue mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, maintaining that average number of students, mm -hmm. and also um, we are also open to, if we want to be an organization or companies who want to say, someone administer their program because our program is not only doing the, um, giving the funds, we do books, tuition, mentorship, but we also do mentorship. Mm -hmm. um, we check in, we have a um, half year or during this, the term, we go and do actual check-ins. We have persons go and visit the school, visit the family if there's a need to do that to see what is it, the, the challenge and try to... You support all the way. All the way through. All so it's way. not Beautiful. just giving mm -hmm. and um, leaving a child to you, survive. I guess you graduates. Yes, oh, we yeah. have a lot of graduates. We have um, valedictorian, um, a lot of salutatorian. Um, we have kids who really excel. Yeah. And as I said, it's not because they're coming from... Any, any, any of them become writers? Um, well, we did have, we do have, actually, we have to say, um, Oscar Kiros. Okay. Yeah, he um, was one of our recipients for a Galen University. Okay. And yeah. um, as you now know, um, yeah. you know, he, he's a pro cyclist. Yeah. But he's one of our recipients of the scholarship. So there you go. And nice. do, you ask, do you ask them in any way to give back? Like you're having this event, for instance. We, we have help, our students, the students, yeah. basically, yes. We ask them to come out and support. Um, yeah. we, if they can, they can participate in, 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 the, in the ride. And yeah. now you're having your upcoming annual fundraising ride. What's yes. the date of this race? Uh, it's April 22nd. Um, it's basically two weeks after the cross country. Mm -hmm. and it's like a... So it's a social ride. Okay. It's, so it's not a race, it's a mm -hmm. social mm -hmm. ride. So you can well, you have some of them race, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, right? No, we don't, we don't um, encourage the racing because, again, we don't have... Pro majority of the riders are not professionals. Mm -hmm. They're just people that does it, that does it for... But some purposes. professionals do participate. Yes, they do. Yeah, and and they, those, those are the ones that help with the pace, they help with the, the refreshments because okay. along the way we be offering refreshments. Um, thanks, thanks to Boeing and Boeing and Poirier. Uh, we also be providing um, bananas and sandwiches, and so it's not mm -hmm. just a, a ride. It, it'll be like a little social event. You can we'll have music, comes to Blue Seal songs. What? Yeah, it's so social event songs like fun. Yes, yeah. and, <laughs> of course, small fee of twenty five dollars, which goes towards helping the foundation. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's, it's well spent because yes. you spend a good time with other people, other yes. folks. Where, where where will the ride? Okay, be the ride will be starting from the the gate and campus here in Belize City, the BIM compound. Okay. Um, you'll proceed to the John Smith Road. And no, then, the, no, the, no, sorry, no, the no, Philip no. Golson. Philip Golson to the John Smith Road, and then the George, George Price Highway. Go across to the George Price. Yeah. And also to the... Uh, and then it's on the screen, I noticed. I yeah. Think you're there on the screen. Yeah. yeah, and then it goes around to the Hatteville Boom Junction, and back to the... John Smith John coming Jones. back down to the um, the coming so down the Philip to see where it went. Yeah. We I do like a eight, eight. A figure eight. Mm -hmm. So you go up the Philip Golson, cross John Smith, up to Hatterville, across the boom road, down back um, Philip Golson, uh -huh. across back to the John Smith to the Philip um, to the George Price. Mm -hmm. And uh, we come through the Chetamal Street bridge mm -hmm. and yes. back down the Philip Golson to the um, flag monument and down Princess Margaret Drive to finish at our, our bar, bar field. field. Okay, yeah. uh, so that's how many miles? That it's 53, like 53 miles. Ooh, that's, um, that's but is it? It's a, it, as you said, it's a <laughs> social ride, so you don't. It's we try to maintain an average speed of 15 miles an hour, okay. and um, that way people can converse. You meet someone, you talk. You know, it's people talk and have you know good mm -hmm. conversation or having jokes around in terms of mm -hmm. during the ride. We have, as he said, support by other cyclists to help provide refreshment. But and we do have a vehicle that will be there. And if you're skilled, yeah. you can go to the vehicle and get your refreshment and come back and you know where you were in that regard. And so. in, in case they say you have a, a flat, we have our donors by our donors by shop that will be out there supporting the, the ride also. And okay. So mm -hmm. you are well taken care of. And we have the transport department, the police and the Belize City Council personnel, tra traffic personnel who will be leading. So it's a safe, you, um, you know, we have a lot of challenges lately as you, um, in reference to drivers and mm -hmm. cyclists, mm -hmm. thinking that cyclists are not. And we do understand some of the challenge on both sides. What day is it gonna be? 
It's, it's a Saturday. Saturday, Saturday morning. morning. Saturday morning. It starts at yeah. six thirty. Yeah. Six thirty. The registration starts at six, at six around six in the morning. Okay. Can normally you pre-register? Yes. Yes, you can. you can. From past experience, normally how long does it take to um, the last one? About around 10.30, we, return, we started at 6.30 and we returned back at the, um, our bar field at s around 10.30 in the morning. Wow, that's, that's, that's really good. fast. Yeah. 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 You so. sure they never made a race? <laughs> no, no, no. no, no. Uh, as I said, I, if you look at it, it's like um, we'd have a stop, by the way, at the CDS service station on the Boom, Boom Road. Um, mm -hmm. Known, owned by Mr. Bissett. Mm -hmm. So um, we would stop there for people who need a break sometimes, you know, because some people might not have been doing that long. They set a goal mm -hmm. to say, I want to accomplish this. So, you know, they take a break and um, get refreshment again. But in terms of, as we said, we maintain an average speed around 15 miles. We try not mm -hmm. to go above mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And so if you look at it, it's like 53 miles and taking that break, it gives you four hours in that. So we start 6.30 and get at 10.30. You bring the bike you are comfortable with and so yes. on. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I would also suggest if you, if you plan to do a rally, start. Start. That's why we're here, sir. We're up here. Yeah. Yeah. So, you can, so you can prepare. Yeah, stretch yeah. your legs That's and... Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you find it on the John Smith Road layout of the cars and I'm going to make it come out. No, 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 sir, layout. Just <laughs> say that. <laughs> no, I'm going to practice and I'm going to make it... Okay. <laughs> yeah. Normally when you're preparing, you just graduate in terms of miles mm -hmm. uh, in um, in preparation. Course, no? So course. this is a good time no, to piece, start. Other piece, you have a good bike. Yeah. It should be a much mm. problem. A Won't nice a mountain bike, a, a beach yes. cruiser, because it's not going to be fast. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I know somebody said they have a be they ride a beach cruiser. I said. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, no it's, it actually sounds like a really cool event to be a part yeah. of. Um, well, is the there any age limit to this? No. We no. Have, we have Young. primary school kids. We have um, high school students. We have professional cyclists, we have social riders. And we have uh, older like, persons or more mature persons. Have you, you what's the eldest person that ever rode it before? Have you um, kept a record? Not really. Okay. But, um, but I, the I the know that people are in their, in their sixties in their sixties riding riding event. So sixties is yeah. as high as you can recall. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's what? a good family event too. Yes Mom, it is. Pop, you know, yeah. Yeah. kids. Yeah. Also, just in terms of there's a registration fee of $25, but for high school kids and kids under 12 and under, mm -hmm. we're charging $10. Uh, okay. You know, we take into consideration mm -hmm. um, trying to get them to be part of it and also the fact that they don't earn money because we do have a group of kids that are out there riding mm -hmm. and, you know, they'd have to go and bother the parent to, mm -hmm. to try Are there to any safety gears that are required yes. to participate? Yes. Helmet. Your helmet. That's okay. the most important thing. Um, I think for any cycling event that is being held, um, of course the federation has their rules, but definitely um, it's for your safety. You fall, you hit your head. You don't have a helmet. It becomes. Yeah. It can become a problem. So, mm -hmm. mandatory for us is a helmet. Okay. And we, and I suspect some we, we, need we also provide. A, we also provide an ambulance just in. Yes. In the event that we have accident. Okay. So. All right. Mm -hmm. What about? I can't make it. But we also there are we vehicles have vehicles out there. Up, yes, there are right, right. vehicles. We have, we have, we, we a stretcher just for you. <laughs> we had we had several riders that have done a couple miles jumping in the truck. Mm -hmm. uh, when you reach the level, jump back out of the truck. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. yeah, we'll have that support service. Um, trying to motivate and encourage people. I, you know, being with a group and finishing with a group. It's an inspiration for some mm -hmm. who might say, next year I'm going to make sure I prepare for it, right? Now, so. all the proceeds of this go to our the scholarship fund? Yes. Okay. Yes. So what we try, we did or we're trying to do, um, we have, we get sponsors to sponsor the, the logistics of the ride. Um, of course, you know, everything costs money. So um, as you said, we have the um, Belize Transport Department who is, who is out there with their um, vehicles to, to ensure safety the police department as well. Um, we have the city council. We have um, Boeing and Boeing, Crystal, giving us the, the refreshment. Um, we are still waiting on more sponsors. In reference to that, we have Mr. Erdones, who provides the um, mechanical services. Mm -hmm. We have um, Champion Security, who will help with the service in having a vehicle with the refreshments out there in that regards. We have Blue Steel, who provides the music. So we. Um, you know, and we have Galen, who is one of our long-standing collaborators. I mean, we have two scholarships that they provide um, for
for a student. Um, right now, we have two students doing that process. So once those students graduate, then we open up again the scholarship for other um, individuals to, to take advantage of that. And I think this event has been gaining more and more popularity over the years, right? Yes, yes. it is. It's, it's, it's therapeutic as well. Yes, yes. it is. Get out yeah. there and do, do some uh, Just a note that we, when we first started, we used to start from Cayo mm -hmm. at the Galen campus. Yeah. Yeah. And what we noticed that it was a little bit tedious sure. for the people to get there. for the average person to, to get there and mm -hmm. to at least fin and to finish it. So we decided to do, give give it a more social feel, a little bit easier, easier on the, the social riders. And so, so that's why we started with this figure eight. Mm -hmm. And been and and from the Yes, mm -hmm. and we, we have gotten good reviews on the mm -hmm. last ride, so. Miss Leticia, have you ever participated? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I have participated in. How do you enjoy it? Oh, um, I, I do ride. Uh -huh. um, but you're working at the same time, right? Yeah. When you're riding? If I'm working, yeah, yeah. I do. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yes, do anything to make sure everything is going mm. properly. Um, you know, if I see anything that needs to be attended to, then Kenrick is there in a vehicle at the back, basically. And oh, I'll he call him. No, I'll okay, call okay. him and I tell him no, to, to you Logistics, know, to help him sir. get in. Yeah. <laughs> so, but um, yes, I, I, I used to be a cyclist. I still ride as a in terms of to, as a healthy lifestyle, and I enjoy doing social ride, and that is how I basically became part of the foundation. Okay. Um, doing social ride, there used to be the social security ride across Belize, the diabetes ride, you know. So I does participate, mm -hmm. and also in the Ariel Rosado, and eventually. You know, I came and assist. But you don't use no big shoes, or you use a racing bike? A road bike, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and that's a racing bike, and that's a road bike. All right, all right. <laughs> yeah. Because a lot of people like riding. You know. Yes. So a lot of people you see like a lot of people, and that, those are the um, persons we are trying to target. You know, come and set a goal. As we said, you don't have to do mm -hmm. the entire ride. You can basically set a goal of how many miles you want to um, accomplish. Vehicles are going to be there. You can take a break and um, join or you can say you know what i'll have my family drop me off at um, maybe cds service station or at, at ladyville and mm -hmm. um, you ride down with the group as i said the feeling of being among a group of people riding for a hearing, cause. Yeah, yeah and especially for a cause it's very very um, good agreed you know um, just remind us of the dates how to register and the cost and so on okay um the date is april 22nd saturday april 22nd we start at the um galen campus there at um, bim or near the healthcare partners mm -hmm. um, we start at 6 30 a.m we provide us like snack or breakfast if you want to say coffee and sandwiches will be there at the start um we leave there we um and then we return as we take the figure eight as we mentioned in terms of the route and we return to our bar. The cost for registration is $25. Um, for, as I said, high school and kids 12 and under, it's $10. At the end of the ride, guess what we do? We will be giving more refreshments. Okay. Mm -hmm. We will have some little ref uh, other refreshments still there. Plus, the riders who complete, registered riders who complete, will receive a medal with the Ariel Rosado, and I completed the 2023 Ariel Rosado ride. Okay. Fundraising, right? So, and um, if anybody else wants to sponsor or pledge, please feel free to contact me. My number is 610-3865 or contact the Ariel Rosado Foundation. Um, sorry, can we help me out with the number? <laughs> um, I think it's 223 um, 56 47. I will, I, I will probably ask to get that number. I apologize. But <laughs> okay. um, to contact the Ariel Rosado Foundation, we have a website that they can. Um, contact us through. We have a Facebook page. Mm -hmm. um, somebody will I definitely respond. It. Yeah. It's not that difficult to find. Yeah, so um, you can contact us to, to basically offer sponsorship, whatever it is. Offer um, sponsorship for uh, the scholarship if you want to contribute to that or if you want, you say you want to sponsor a child, as I said, it's 12, uh, the, what we do, the average is $1,200 to sponsor, to fully sponsor a and child. Right? Yeah, yeah, per year, per year. Yeah. And um, if you, any corporate or if you want to register for this event, feel free to contact us and um, we'll get you the registration form. You can drop it off at the Erdones bike shop or at um, the Ariel Rosado office. Our office basically is on the highway behind the um, Belize Bank where Rhodes is. That there's a street there and our office is right at, as you go in, you turn and you will see the, the sign for the Ariel Rosado Foundation. It's actually named the Ariel Rosado Drive, um, Ariel Rosado Drive.
congratulations for Thank you. doing great work. Thank mm -hmm. you. No problem. Yeah, definitely. Peter and I still, I will this. still come to you every year, Mr. Vasquez, and try to get you out on the road to join, to be with us in the social um, life. I want race though. I mean, I want. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> no problem. We can set that up for you. <laughs> 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 yeah, but yeah, so thank you and um, you know You're for this welcome. opportunity and feel free to join us at any time. Yeah, and um, you know, when you come back, maybe you can bring a, a student or two so we can yeah. meet yeah. some of the brilliant the young people so that you work with. That's really we should be back young with a student and yeah. have to help promote the yes. Yeah, yes. That yes. 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 yeah, yes, of course. Pro we can yes. probably do that um, to come and promote when we're because our, our scholarship um, application process when it starts. It finishes, I know, um, the second day, uh, second fr weekend of Friday of June to mm -hmm. submit your application. You can always get the application I, um, and get it ready. The object or how you go about it is you fill out the form, show the financial need, um, ensure you're already accepted in a school of your choice, mm -hmm. and from there you submit. That's for the, um, for the high school. Um, we actually, I am going to spill bean, we will be sending an agreement with the Ministry of Education next week. Um, getting five scholarships for junior secondary school, it, not SJC, it's any of the junior secondary school, as well as for a scholarship for UB. So we're adding that to our list for this, for this coming school year. All right, once again, keep up the good work and thank, thank you both you. for being here. Um, I hope you have the most successful ride yet, all right? Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys, uh, that was Leticia Westby, president and uh, Kenrick Richards, Vice President and Chairperson of the Ride Committee with the Ariel Rosado Foundation. Um, we'll be back after this. We'll be talking uh, about Jesus when we come back. Don't go anywhere.
Buddy, the morning show continues. We've been dealing mostly with sports. So far, cycling to be specific. Yeah, we started with uh, first with price gouging and then a little bit of cycling. And now, of course, it's the season. Right now, we're in the, well, for some Christians, the Lenten season and the Easter season. So joining us in the studios today, we have uh, representatives of the Church of Jesus Christ for Latter-day Latter -day Saints, Saints, Elder Braden Legendre and Matthew McClellan. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good Welcome morning. to our Good studios. To be here. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. It really is. How does your church observe um, this season? We call it Easter in the tr Christian tradition and in Catholic, it's Lent? But it's Easter yeah, as well. Yeah, it's Easter, yeah. Yeah. How, do you, how do you observe this time? Is it different? Do you celebrate Easter? That is a really good question. We, we very much do. Mm -hmm. We okay. focus on Jesus Christ and mostly mm -hmm. His resurrection, the life that He lived and okay. the things that He taught. Yeah, I think that the resurrection is really the main focus of this time. Um, okay. But yeah, we celebrate Easter just like many other Catholic religions. Okay, uh, because you're going to ask you what makes you different from, say, the Catholics or the Methodists? The, yeah. what, what makes the, the, the church, your church, your denomination different? Yeah, I think that that's probably one of the biggest differences is the fact that we, we mostly focus on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But yeah, we, we, we mostly focus on, on Jesus Christ. That, that's really the biggest center of it, right? We don't get too caught up in the other worldly things, but we mostly want to focus on Him. But what, who is Jesus Christ to your faith? We believe that Jesus Christ is our Savior. He's our Redeemer, right? He died for each and every one of us. And so because of that, we can repent of our sins and, and be resurrected again as well. Okay. I know in some, in some religions, uh, they believe that Jesus was just a man and others believe he was God and others believe he was a combination. Um, what does the Church of Latter-day Saints teach? So we teach that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Okay. We have our Heavenly Father, God the Eternal Father, mm -hmm. and then His Son Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost. And together they make up the Godhead. Got so, it. Yeah. Yeah, so we, we believe that they're like three individual separate beings, right? But they're one in purpose. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I went to school with that, you know, the Holy Trinity right. and the Holy Ghost. And to this day, I'm having problems understanding that. But um, it takes a lot uh, to do with faith. Give us a little bit of history of your, of your church. The, you know, what, how did it come to be? Do you follow the Pope or do you have an archbishop or whatever? I don't know. Give us a little bit of that makeup. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. So we believe that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is a restoration of the same church that Jesus Christ himself established 2,000 years ago when he was on the earth. And so it was officially founded or restored in 1830 through the prophet Joseph Smith. Okay. And, yeah. yeah. Um, is, is it, so do you follow some of the Jewish traditions? I mean, considering Jesus was a Jew and the church he started was a Jewish church. You know, but, but now we call it a Christian church or Catholic or so on. Do you still follow some of the, or any connection at all with, with say, the Jews, for instance, who say they are the ones who follow the Jesus' teachings? That's a really good question. Um, I mean, I think that one of the biggest things is we, we still believe in the Bible, um, I think is one of the biggest yeah. connections. Um, we, lots of people think that us as Mormons are is what they like to call us. We're, we believe in a book called the mm -hmm. Book of Mormon. Mm -hmm. um, but we also believe in the Bible, right? Okay. So yeah. yeah. All right. Well, you're having a a, a, a conference. Is that no, you're well, here? Indeed. And you know, <clears throat> the, if you if you notice the adverts this week, they're having a revival at the park mm -hmm. with, with you know, uh, lots of uh, Christian music and so on, and different churches and places are having gatherings and teachings and so on. Is it similar? Is your conference similar? Or just that you call it a different name? It's, it's a little bit like that, but more uh, gathering worldwide through, okay. through a broadcast. So the conference itself oh, takes it's place in, international in event. Salt Lake City, Utah. Okay, this has to do with the Easter season? Does it have to yeah. do with that? Mm -hmm. Okay, tell us more about that then. Yeah, so the general expect? conference is it's a worldwide gathering, right? Everyone is invited to come and hear messages. Right, from the leaders of the church. And so the, these leaders have prepared messages, right? They're trying to follow the spirit on what the world needs to hear in these tumultuous times in which we live. So everyone's invited to come and watch and really participate. You know, in Belize, we have a very interesting tradition. Um, around this time of year, we, we like to have, we like to enjoy uh, what we call a bun and fish. 
<laughs> hot cross buns. Yeah, yeah, we call yeah. it the hot cross buns. Yeah. They're made um, in, in remembrance of the crucifixion, of course. It's just it's, mm. it's a loaf. It's a little sweet. And um, we serve it with fried fish. It. Yeah, it has a cross. That's, that's the special thing about mm. it. And, 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 and a sugar glaze on top, of course. Um, have you indulged in any of the, you know, maybe some of the cultural ways or cultural things in Belize? Yeah, we definitely have. We've both <laughs> been in Belize for almost a year now. Mm -hmm. And so we've lived in different parts so far. And I especially love the Dangriga. Ah. Yeah, Dangriga. Well, there you go. Yes, All the right. Griffina culture. Yeah. They have a lot of good foods. Mm -hmm. The hudut is very good. The fried <laughs> fish and the, the mashed plantains. Yeah, so, that, that's yeah. very good. Well, you have to try the hot cross bun and, uh, with, the, with the fish. Mm, okay. I'm very excited <laughs> to try that. It sounds very good. <laughs> so how, how do... I, I'm sure you're, you're here because this, your conference is not only for members of the church, but for the wider community. Yes. How, how do I get involved? How do I participate? Yeah. That's a really good question. So yes, the general conference is for everyone all over the world. Doesn't matter if you're single, married, older, or younger, everyone's invited to participate. And so it will be available through the church's website, churchofjesuschrist.org, as well as through the Facebook page for the Saturday sessions. Yeah, so we'll be having, yeah, so there's two days, right? April 1st and April 2nd. So the first Saturday, um, there will be three sessions, um, and everyone's invited to these sessions, right? The first mm -hmm. one will be 10 a.m., um, second one will be 2 p.m., um, and then the last one will be 6 p.m. And you can either go on to the Church of Jesus Christ, um, dot org under the website, or follow Christ in Belize, uh, the Facebook page, and it will be broadcasted on both of those. But will there be a face-to-face part of the conference uh, at, your, at your church or at your... Yeah, yeah. You call them churches or temples? Sure. We have churches and temples, okay. our meeting houses where we get together and congregate mm -hmm. every Sunday. Mm -hmm. Those are just the churches. Mm -hmm. And so in every church that we have in Belize, there, it, the conference will be broadcast to there yes. for all okay. sessions. So. so I can go there and attend? Mm -hmm. Yes, correct. Yeah, right. So yeah, you can go to the church building, go there and attend in person. Obviously, it's not like a, you won't be face-to-face -face with them, but they will of be broadcast. Of course, they'll be on, 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 on a screen or something. Yes. So. Where are your churches? Um, so the one here in Belize City is on Cemetery Road, um, right by the Uno gas station, just a little bit more in. And then we got them all over Belize, um, Dangriga, Corsal, Orange Walk, Cayo as well, and San Ignacio, Sukkotes, Bullet Tree. You, you've been all over. You're, you're all over. Yeah. 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 Do you have any particular, um, should I call it traditions or, you know, each, the Christians, uh, recently we had our friends, the from Islam here, mm. and the way they, they, of course, their teachings are, are different. But does your church have like women and modesty, things like that? Yeah, is modesty uh, and holiness a big part of what you teach? It very much is. Yeah, Mo modesty is a very, very important thing that we, we all like to practice, right? We believe that our bodies are not our own, right? Mm -hmm. God has given this body to us as a gift, and we should treat it such. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. To what extent does the woman's modesty need to be to be carried. I mean, you long sleeves, things like that with a woman. Is there a special way she needs to dress mm -hmm. on a daily basis? Um, I wouldn't say there's necessarily a special way, yeah. but we believe in just being modest and mm -hmm. you know, not drawing mm -hmm. too much attention to yourself. But. Yeah. Yeah. But you, but you do draw a lot of attention to yourselves. I mean, you're, you're, <laughs> as mission is yeah, maybe yeah, the mission, name tag know, and exactly. You know, and, and yeah. you're on a mission, and you you consider yourself missionaries, that is correct. right? And a missionary is needs to go out there, and I think that is where you you do follow Jesus's words. He said, "Go out, yeah, and, mm -hmm. and, and preach." And you do that. You do go out. Yeah. So how do you young men get involved in this? How do you decide that you will be doing this? Because it's not easy. I see you walking around in that sun hut. People are like, <laughs> right. whoa, these guys. Yeah. <laughs> Very committed. <laughs> they, they're committed, yeah. yeah uh, and you're both young men. Uh, you're mm -hmm. from the U.S., I suspect. We are, yeah. yeah different states. We're uh, both from Utah. Yeah, yeah we are. Utah. So yes, you knew yeah. yourselves before. We actually did not. We did not, yeah. We, did. we met in the mission field. And okay. where did you meet? Um, yeah, just here in Belize City. In Belize. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you get together? Right? Who decides who goes with who and so on? Is, it, is there a compatibility chart you have to go <laughs> <laughs> There it actually is not. But uh, So we have a mission president, and he receives revelation from God mm -hmm. as far as which missionaries need to be where okay. with which companions. Okay. And then really? kind of works yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. But as, as young, so 
you grew up in the religion. You grew up in the in, yes. in your church. Yeah, us specifically, we, we did. Yes, we did. But there are plenty of missionaries as well who are converts to the church. And right, that's what I'm missions. going to ask. Yourselves, you grew up as children, your parents are, and so on. I do. do you decide this as a career or just a, a part of your life of volunteering? Maybe and then you will move on later so. on yeah. mm. to, to, I don't know, study law or whatever. Because <laughs> you do do that, right? Yeah, you yeah. The, the, mission, the mission is a voluntary experience, mm. right? I mean, exactly. the, the mission, no, no one's obligated to go. Um, I've always wanted to serve a mission. My father served a mission, right? Um, and so that, that's really what's encouraged me to serve. But, yeah, I mean, it's something that we, we all do, right? It's only for two years. It's voluntary. We don't get paid to don't be paid. here. Um, no one in the church gets paid, really. I mean, this is this is all voluntary. Yeah, Jesus was always broke. We know that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But so, but, but um, so you get away from school, is that it? You you yep. you you know, but you have to finish some schooling level before you do this. So mm -hmm. what? You, there, there's an age minimum. Uh -huh. Yeah, you have to be at least 18 years, 18 old. years old. Okay. You're 18. I, I'm 20. Oh, actually. okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you get that a lot. <laughs> yeah, no, it's okay. Yeah. And and then. So you've been here a year, um, yeah. Uh, and and but you're 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 hosted. You're. And what is what are, when you come? What are your duties? What what do they mm -hmm. tell you? You need to do what on a daily basis? What's mm -hmm. your job? Really good question. So our main focus is to invite others to come into Christ and to help okay. them increase their faith, repent, be baptized, receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, and then continue to do that throughout the rest of their lives. How do you do that? I mean, how, what, what's, you have a plan, I, mm -hmm. I'm sure. Yeah, you have yeah. a strategy on how you, you, it, yeah. you're going to do I, this. I mean, we, we have something called Preach My Gospel. Um, it's a book uh -huh. that the church has published uh -huh. to help us really uh -huh. magnify what we're doing here, mm -hmm. right? Because, a lot, I mean, lots of people think that we're just here to change their religion, right? To help them come to our church. But that, that's really not at, at all true. We're here to grow their faith, right? So there are some things that we learn right throughout the mission, who, you know, contacting people and receiving references, but... I mean, that's, that's really yeah. what we're The main doing. thing we do is sharing messages about yeah. Jesus Christ. And you do that by approaching strangers. A lot right? of the time, and that yes. takes yeah. that takes some courage. I, I mean, yeah. you know, <laughs> you you yeah. you, f you face rejection, you face welcome, and so on. Do you get that's discouraged true. sometimes, or any time you get back home and say, you know, just didn't <laughs> spread the word today the way? I mean, you know. definitely. I think the discouragement comes with anything, right? I mean, there will always be opposition, but there's also the little things, right, that do happen, right? Someone maybe lets us into their house. We have a very good lesson, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, you, you kind of you just roll with the punches, I think. But, but let me ask, is it? Is it at all scary being in in Belize City? I know a strange country, Belize, for and, and and you know Belize City does have a reputation, um, even for people who come to Belize to vacation to visit, they prefer somewhere else in the country. Um, were you at all nervous about being placed here? That's a good question. For me personally, I wasn't too nervous because I had been serving in Dangriga and Cortisol prior to coming to Belize City, mm -hmm. and so I had the opportunity mm -hmm. to visit the the city and kind of get to know it a little bit. And maybe at times there's a little bit of fear, but we know that we are protected and that we're doing a good thing, and so God will yeah. protect us. Positive actions brew positive reactions, right? Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, but when you decide to do this, you the country is chosen for you where you're going? Yeah, or, so, so okay. like he mentioned, right, we have a president that has, she's a relation for us. Mm -hmm. But before that, um, when we want to serve a mission, we simply submit our paper saying, I would like to serve. And then um, the leaders of the church, right, specifically the Quorum of the Twelve, right, they, mm -hmm. they pray and they fast over where we should go. And so what, how it kind of works is we, our picture pops up on a TV screen and they, they kind of listen to the Spirit and see where we should serve. Mm. And we receive that call back saying, you're called to Belize. You're called to Belize. And you never heard of Belize before, right? Um, I have, actually. <laughs> my, my, my uncle went here to his honeymoon, and so I got to hear a little bit about it, but... You, you can't say, like, I want to go to Hawaii, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, no. no. I mean, I don't get no. to because I'm sure you have those that go to Hawaii. Yes. True. Yeah, yeah, I mean, how would he get so lucky? I, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were equally lucky here in Belize, though. Yeah. yeah. Belize is beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And after you finish this, do you get, I don't know, grade or points or something within? Because are you going to continue the, the rest of your life <laughs> as, as missionaries, or you will then go in onto separate careers? Is that what, go to university, or I don't know, what, what's your plan? It's a good question. As far as like some reward or incentive for serving a mission, there is none. Mm -hmm. But Ex we definitely have the except, plan. Of except, of course, what you're doing. Yeah. That's true, true. Reward, exactly. Yeah. But as far as like recognition in the church, no. 
there's no really special assignment or calling after this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We just serve in the church in whatever cap capacity that we're called upon to do. Okay. Mm -hmm. But when you're done with this, then you go off to do your own lives. Your own pursuits. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, your own, yeah, you, yeah we, we still try to stay active in the church, right, to fulfill mm -hmm. our callings. But, yeah, we still, I, my plan is to go to college, to study, and Where? eventually pursue University of Utah? Um, no, I'll be serving, um, well, not serving, I guess. Yeah. I'll, be, I'll be attending the Southern Utah universities. Where okay. I'll be trying to are, are, are all the universities in Utah Mormon-based? They are not. They're not. Okay. As far as I know, only Brigham Young University in Provo, Utah is the church sponsored. Church, church, church sponsored. Yeah. Yeah. I believe there's like Enzyme College is another one, another one in BYU, Idaho, Hawaii. Because the universities yeah. have a good grading. I mean, the University of Utah is, is one of the... Made it a very good university, and you can study basically any field you you want there. Yeah, that's very to true. Do that. This the, the the church influences your life though the way you think what you're going to do next, um, mm -hmm. who you're going to marry, you know how you're going to behave as a husband. Mm -hmm. No drinking, sure. no smoking. Yeah. You've decided all that now already. Yeah. Whoa. I mean, yeah, yeah. We decided that mm -hmm. when we get baptized, right? There's certain. Um, oh, you're not baptized yet. No, no, no. We oh, we decided oh, when we okay. get baptized, right? Like when a new member does. But I think that I don't know. I love the gospel because it really strengthens the family unit, right? We believe that the that the family is the is the key unit of society. It's the very, very it's, yeah. it's the core well said, unit. Well said. Right? I agree. Yeah, and I so agree. the gospel really strengthens that a lot, right? It really focuses on good relationships with your wife, with your kids, and that that's personally why I really love the gospel, right? It helps us be better people. So. In my family, my wife is the boss. <laughs> I mean, I mean, is that yeah. the same thing in... Your mom's a, in, in are the bosses? Your, is your mom oh, yeah. the boss? My, my mom, my mom, yeah, she, <laughs> she, she's, a, she's amazing, I love her. Yes. Yeah. Now, um, we were talking about how you celebrate Easter. Are there any special ways that you observe uh, this time of... Like Easter Sunday? Yeah. Right. Any special meals or feasts or, or sacraments? Um, I mean, we do take the sacrament as normal. Um, on Easter Sunday, mm -hmm. but for general conference, sometimes it falls on Easter and sometimes it doesn't, because it's always the first Sunday of oh, okay. of, yeah. of April. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So, okay, yeah. so th that happens. I right? mean, a tradition in my family that um, sometimes we would do is, you know, cinnamon rolls. I mean, you know, maybe like the morning of conference, we just get cinnamon rolls. The family just make mm -hmm. something. That's nice. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but as like church wide, there really is nothing special. When you're done, do you have a quota that you report back? to the elders and say, well, I think I succeeded in passing the word. Is there any measurement or anything to, to question. show it? Um, as far as numbers, as far as I know, there is no quota or measurement. No. We just no. do our best to invite others to, to build their faith. Is yeah. your church growing? Do you see more and more converts? Oh, yeah. 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 Do so you, that means do you're working. Do you find a lot of people in Belize curious about the Church of Latter-day Saints and your faith? Yeah, in my experience, we have found a lot of people, I think most people are Christian here. They have a lot of faith. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of really good people mm -hmm. looking to, to learn more. Mm -hmm. And so we do our best to, to share what we know. Do you find some of parts of the country more difficult than others? More resistant or receptive? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I mean, to be honest, I, I've been in Bullet Tree and Maimopan and now Belize City. I feel like the people generally are very welcoming, right? They're very loving. And I don't really feel a contention between any other city mm -hmm. or another. I feel like everyone mm -hmm. in Belize is pretty, very welcome, very loving. How do you decide who you're going to approach? I mean, we're, we're, we're supposed to be guided by the Spirit, right? I think it's mm -hmm. one of the biggest things. Before we leave every day, right, we try and we pray and we ask for the guidance of the Spirit. And so mm -hmm. that can just come as simply like, I should go talk to him, you know, and so maybe yeah. we'll go talk to him. Or now you mentioned that um, you can attend any of the churches that you guys have uh, or temples, and the, the the there'll be like a, I guess a group watching um, of the the conference, um, but are persons encouraged to watch maybe at, at their own homes, um, separately, individually as well? That's a good question. So there are five different sessions of general conference, right? That's, it, that is a lot to ask for, of someone to watch mm -hmm. all of them. Mm -hmm. And so really it, it's, it's up to each individual as far as how they want to watch it. So if I wanted to log on right now, yes. where do I go? So I would recommend going to churchofjesuschrist.org. Churchofjesuschrist.org, mm -hmm. okay. And yeah. then that would guide me to the tomorrow's events and Sunday's events. Mm -hmm. And I, what Tamar is asking, so I, I don't have to leave my home. I can log mm -hmm. on 
and if I like a speaker or presenter or whatever, will there be music? There will be music will be in every music. session. Okay. The Tabernacle Choir at Temple Square, they, they sing That's one of them. I mean, that's world famous. The Mormon yeah. Tabernacle yes, Choir I, is world famous. I really enjoy yeah, listening yeah, to them. Yeah, they, yeah. They, they'll be on. And you two will be presenting anything? or? Um, we, we will be at the church um, here in Belize City, um, setting everything up and getting it projected um, for everyone. But, yeah. Yeah. So, so you need a little background in technology, don't you? <laughs> a little bit, yeah. A little yeah, bit. yeah. Um, is there anything available on YouTube, maybe? Um, past sermons or...? Yes. So all of the general conference messages from the past are mm -hmm. on YouTube as well. Yes. Yeah, we have a... You could put that up on this on screen, William, the uh, address. Because it's quite uh, complicated to read, but the, our technician just found the website. Uh, and, okay. and you know where you can, we can log in and yeah, and, awesome. and see. Yeah, it. it is on YouTube on the churches. Does um, the does does well. Jesus okay with you using all this technology? I mean, the old-fashioned way he wanted you to go there and do this. I mean, you know. So I guess right. you're, you're making your life easier now with technology. Uh, yeah, we believe that <laughs> you know God has given us the tools that we need to be able to spread the gospel to to all those who want to hear it. Right? Yeah, Jesus also didn't have an airplane. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, he, he could walk on water, so he did. You know, he, he could probably ride a bicycle on water. Yeah, I think technology yeah. is definitely something very dangerous. Right? It's a double-edged sword, and we are very encouraged to use it correctly. Right? Mm -hmm. It can be used equally for bad and for good. So we try and yeah. use it as much for our benefit. You've been watching the progress of artificial intelligence. Uh, it's, be, we, it's, we becoming, <laughs> it's becoming scary. Oh, is it? Wow. Know, the, 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 the inventors are now asking for to put a hold on its development because it's they're afraid they won't be able to control it. Yeah. yeah. What a time to be alive! I know, <laughs> yeah. I, for Lord. sure. Anyway, your conference. Just give us the date again, when to when, and how yeah. to log on. So how to watch those who missed it. All right. Yeah. So there will be five different sessions split between two days. First being Saturday, April first. So tomorrow, um, there will be a session from. 10 a.m. to noon, and then again from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m., and then from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. for the Saturday okay. session. And the screen, see we show And those will be available through um, the internet mm -hmm. yeah. on churchofjesuschrist.org as well as on YouTube and Facebook. Yeah. yeah, on the Facebook page, Follow Christ in Belize, you guys can also log on and find it there as well. All right. And then the Sunday sessions, there's one at 10 a.m. and then again at 2 p.m., and those will be broadcast to, to Love TV. All right, well, congratulations so you to you too for your hard work, and I hope you're enjoying Belize a little more than just, you know, with a religious point of view. Um, yeah. Get to know the country. It's a beautiful uh, country. We have, we have beautiful yeah, people we love it here. country here, and I must say we do need saving, right, Tamar? Yeah. We do need saving. Don't we so. all? We all do. <laughs> yes, we're definitely not perfect. Yeah. yeah no, we're, we're just doing our best to live the gospel as well as we share it. So, yeah. Elder, well... That's a misnomer, I mean, elder. Yeah. Elders, <laughs> yeah. Right? For both of you, uh, Braden Legendre and Elder Matthew McClellan from the Church of Jesus Christ for Latter-day Saints. Thank you for coming in this morning. And, well, and, it is a season. And thank you for asking, all, answering all our questions. Yes, we, had, we had many. Good. And, 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 and all, all our good. questions were good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's right. <laughs> thank you, guys. Thank you for having me. All thank right. You guys. We are going to take, take a break. When we come back, we'll be talking with our friends. About from, technology. From DJ. Yeah. Don't go anywhere. Become a member of the Gillen Eagle Alumni.
Welcome well, back, folks, and we have the last few minutes of the show. And uh, you know, it's our show is always diversified and varied and relevant. And like we said earlier, we've been talking about uh, bicycle riding, mm -hmm. uh, which is the season, yeah. and then a little bit of religion, which a is the season. A little kudos to Jesus. Yeah. And yeah, um, and, and now. <laughs> It's always a season to use your device. Always, especially, but especially um, in these, you know, I want to say summer, although when really, I reach really, summer yet. You're a, you're a single lady. I mean, do uh -huh. you get more like requests <laughs> during this time? I get a lot more message in my DMs if, I was, yeah, if that's yeah, what you're okay, asking. Okay, okay, but okay. Um, that's apart from the point. We are welcoming to our studio Stephen Yearwood. He is the advertising and brand manager at, over there at Digi and uh, Brittany Young, solutions manager. Guys, I'm so sorry not to witness that. <laughs> These are the things I go through and <laughs> put my whole business out there. <laughs> Good morning. Good, Good morning, morning, Belize. It's always a pleasure to be here and Feeling from <laughs> off that energy, <laughs> we are super excited. I mean, we're really excited to be here this morning. Um, yesterday was the launch of Digi One. Digi One. So it's all about Digi One, and what Digi One is, it's our bundled packages. So for the past couple of years, we've been working towards this. Um, we built out the largest mobile 4G LTE network in the country and there's thousands of customers enjoying the best mobile experience. Uh, we built out the fastest and most reliable fiber network countrywide um, and there's also thousands of customers not only enjoying but depending on our fiber network for the day to day. Um, we are ongoing expanding both networks. Uh, <clears throat> we've also have our digital service, which is our home phone service, um, which people still love. Mm -hmm. there, there are people always asking, people still use home phone? Yep. Yes, they do. do. And we recently launched last year DigiTV, right? Both DigiTV and Digital, those services work over the fiber network. So it's high quality, reliable services that we're looking at right there being offered by Digi. So don't, you, don't forget Digicel. Your mobile. That's the first one I started with, the mobile. <laughs> I don't think so. Chubert, he missed with that, right? Mobile. He, he, he started with it. <laughs> Wait, no, I had emphasis. Well, so we have Digicel, <laughs> yes, DigiNet, yes, Digital, yes. Now, and Now, how Digi does TV. Digi1 bring all of these together? So how does Digi1 bring all these things together? There are some people who have services from multiple providers. You know, what they can now do is come to Digi, who is now the only quad play service provider in the country. We're making history because nobody else can boast that. Um, and they can get all these services all in one place from Digi. One package. One, one package. package. Digi One. One bundle, no hassle, exceptional value. So there is deep, deep meaning to the name of these bundles. All right. So um, let's talk about each of these products individually. Um, starting with DigiTV, um, a lot of people are still learning more about it and how it works and what it provides, what, what they have access to once they have DigiTV. So DigiTV is exactly as the name, um, Ludes mm -hmm. TV. Uh -huh. Multiple channels, it's, it's not Netflix. So let's clarify that one time, it's, it's not Netflix. Mm -hmm. It's access to over 130 channels. Um, we are upgrading the app so there's a new app available and this app is super amazing it's not it's not only watching when you have time you can also go back in the event you know ernesto has his favorite show but he can't view it now because he's on the morning show yes. when he gets home well, i he like you mentioned that because that does happen to me right so now, you watching can go something back on digital tv right. and i want to pause it or i want to go back. no so you can go back okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And get comfortable, get your popcorn, get your coffee, however you mix it up, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and enjoy your show. Um, you can also, with DigiTV, you do, you do not only have to watch it at home, on the TV, on your 90-inch TV that you have mm -hmm. at home. <laughs> you can also view it on your phone. So while commuting to and from work or wherever it is that you're going. You, see, you realize you the difference between 90-inch and this? <laughs> well, you, I mean... I could catch up. You can catch up. Yeah. You can catch up. Um, and it doesn't matter what it is. We have the sports channels. We have the novellas. We, we have, there's something for everybody on DigiTV. 
Similarly to how there's a bundle package for everybody. These packages are designed to suit your specific lifestyle. There's a package for me, there's a package for Brittany, there's a package for Ernesto, and there's a package for Tamar. You know, so we're excited. We've been looking forward to this for so long. So yes, today was just an amazing, amazing achievement. Mm -hmm. We had a celebration, and now it's back on the grind so that everybody understands Digi1. So it's not only for our existing customers who can upgrade, it's also for our potential customers. We are welcoming everybody to the Digi1 family. All right, now... If, if if I have DigiTV, but I also have another separate package with you guys, can I come now and consolidate and get one and that's, change it? That's exactly what we want customers to know. Okay. So, for instance, you have the current DigiNet mm -hmm. DigiTriple bundle. Mm -hmm. So you have your home internet, you have your home phone, and mm -hmm. you have your Digicel, your mobile service, mm -hmm. right? So now we offer our one elite package that offers the combination of your home internet with mm -hmm. increased speed. So now you get 200 megs compared to the digit triple. So you have more speed in this bundle. You mm -hmm. keep your home phone, you mm -hmm. keep your mobile service, whether you prefer the prepaid or postpaid mm -hmm. option, and you get to bundle it with your digit TV. So you get all four services in one bundle. And, and that's one price savings. So you get savings speeds. because you're the, the more, separate the more, right the more you bundle, mm -hmm. the more you save. Correct. Mm -hmm. okay. um, but in terms of that, like Steve mentioned, we have different options for, you know, different lifestyles. Not everybody necessarily needs to opt in to 200 megs. You might have a smaller household. Maybe it's just you and, <coughs> you know, your you have roommate, whatever it might be. You have a one starter option, which offers 20 megs bundled with DigiTV and it's usable on two devices. So you could have, you know, your TV in the living room, you have your TV in your in bedroom. bedroom and you could be watching separate shows, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then we have the option where you could step up if you step up if you want some maybe higher speeds, you could step up to our 60 meg plan which still offers the home internet, DigiNet, bundled with DigiTV, and you have the two devices. And then the one that mm -hmm. I mentioned to you actually has four devices. So that's for that larger household mm -hmm. if you want to, mm -hmm. you know, you're in the living room watching your news and then the kids are on their tablet watching Disney Channel, whatever it might be. Then you have that flexibility where the whole family is enjoying the TV and nobody's fighting in the living room about, you know, what to watch, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so all those options are available. And like you mentioned, for customers, Customers that are currently with Digi and they want to upgrade, we're actually offering a limited time offer right now to upgrade for free. So you get a discount for the first two months to upgrade to, for instance, if you come in, you want to upgrade to the One Elite, you mm -hmm. get to upgrade at your current plan price. So you get that discounted value within yeah. that bundle. And that's a limited time offer for existing customers. So now is the time to come in, upgrade, and get your DigiTV bundled with all your existing home phone, home internet, and your mobile service. How is um, DigiTV installed? Is there a device that you guys come and... No, actually, it's pretty simple. So it's an application that you download. Um, like Steve mentioned, you could have it at home. So if you have, depending on your TV, we have it available in the different app stores. You have it on um, the Roku. Apple... Yeah, correct. Roku, Roku. Google Play Store, um, the Amazon Android, Store, Android TV, Android TV um, the Apple Play Store. So if you want to download it on your device, your TV at home, you could download it on your tablet. You could have it on your mobile phone while you're on the go. If the kids are in the back seat in the car and they need something to watch, they could be watching their digit TV. So it's just an application you download from the app store and it's as simple as that. Then you log in, you're able to browse and stream whatever channel suits you. And what, what, what is important to mention also with, with these bundled packages, with the exception of the starter plan mm -hmm. or the starter bundle, all the packages, the DigiNet speeds have been increased. So it's more speeds in these Digi1 bundle packages. Mm. Well, I mean, we're sold already, so I don't know when I'll do it the next nine minutes of the show. <laughs> 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 well, we could 
try to <laughs> talk to those customers who, you know, haven't come to their senses as yet and join the Digi family. Mm -hmm. Like I mentioned, we are offering the free upgrade for existing customers, but if you're ready to make the switch, now is also the time because you get your first two months at half off. So you pay half the price for the first two months, you know, free installation, no deposit. All you need is your valid ID and then you're able to opt into one of our DigiOne plans. So it's that simple. You could sign up online. We have our application forms. <laughs> you could WhatsApp us at 608-8888. You could call us at 119, you know, like you mentioned, if you prefer to make calls directly. Mm -hmm. You could visit our store if you prefer to have that one-on-one, -on -one, face to face conversation with our reps. So whichever way is most convenient for you, all you need is your valid ID. You're able to sign up. And the benefit is that you walk away with your mobile plan and your DigiTV access working. right away. Walk out working. Correct. And then, of course, we come out and we install your home internet and home phone for you at a time that's convenient for you. Um, this With the starter plan, maybe some people are going to want to start there. Yeah. Um, what comes yeah, in yeah. that package, mm -hmm. in that bundle? In the one starter, that's where you get the home internet. So DigiNet with 20 meg speed, okay. and then you get DigiTV for two devices, okay. and that's starting at $79. So that's that bundled. Two devices, and it includes all the 130, 130 channels. channels. Yes. Correct. Yes. So 130 plus channels, including entertainment, um, kids' channels, Disney, sports, sports um, you know. Soaps. <laughs> Soaps. <laughs> and we continue to look at more channels that we could add in to make sure we're meeting all and the you're and adding more channels yes. and yeah. what's important to to mention also is that the local channels are there oh yeah. so you yes. can catch all your news all your favorite local yeah, that's, channels that's all digital. those channels are there yeah. channels, digitally and if you miss yeah. it you get you have the catch-up tv like steve mentioned mm -hmm. where maybe you mm -hmm. miss the morning show this morning and you run home for lunch you could mm -hmm. rewind up yeah. to seven days so if and yeah catch so up. if you didn't get your daily dose of ernesto if i never catch the drama on the morning show um listen guys i'm trying to think of why anybody would not get this um because the at the, that price point it says 79 dollars for the starter package um, I'm sure as your needs increase, you can update that or upgrade that at any point in the future. Exactly. Um, but it's... But I, it's how many packages is it? Four. Four, Four options. Uh, then what's the next package after 79? So after the 79, you have the one essential plan that is at 109. Mm -hmm. It comes with 60 megs speed so you have the increased speed if you're you know you have more devices connected you want faster speed then you could go with the one essential with 60 megs and you get the digit tv bundled with that as well and you get the two devices so mm -hmm. all the plans come with the DigiNet home internet and digit tv mm -hmm. option mm -hmm. so that's an option too depending on you know what your affordability mm -hmm. is and what your household size is you could choose that one too all right. I love um, that you're writing this down, Ernest. And, th and, then, <laughs> and, then, and then the next one? And then up from that, we mm -hmm. have our one premium. So that one is at 139. Mm -hmm. You have increased speeds again. You're at 120 megs. From 80. From 80 with our current DJ double option. Mm -hmm. um, and this one includes the mobile service. So you could get a prepaid plan bundled with your home internet. And then you have DigiTV as well, now on four devices. So this one is, you know, you need more speed. You have maybe a slightly larger household. Um, and then you're still looking at your budget. So you're at 139. They're bundling everything together. Right. And then you have the top of the line. And then the top of the line. The Ernesto Paquid. <laughs> Ernesto Paquid. This is yes. the Ernesto Paquid. Our elite, our one elite that includes everything that you need in one bundle, one price, and offers most important things, savings for for you as a customer. And okay. that includes your internet, the 200 megs, can't get any faster than that. Up from 150. <laughs> and the fastest in the country. Because what you have right faster. now, I, I, ha I have, right now it's when, when I set up my one, they said this is the fastest minutes. we have. That so that was the fastest, that, and then so well, we, we introduced the one and we brought even, even faster. Even faster. Yeah. What about cell phones? Mm -hmm. um, packaging cell phones, like You'll ever have a package where you have two cell phones in the package? Like, you know, 
Be we could because, look at that. Because it, yeah. abroad, you know, you have a family of four and you have uh -huh. four cell phone package, you think like that, you know. Something Maybe there's yeah. customizable solutions. So the, the, la the last recommendation that he gave, uh -huh. we, we took it, <laughs> we took it and it was applied. <laughs> so you're so two for two now. Yeah. Two for two? So we'll go back and, and we'll see. Actually, the, the conversation has already um, come up. So. Yeah, because um, customers. Yeah, customers do come in um, mm. and ask, what about two phones? I have my family, my yeah. wife, my kids. Yeah. I would want to put everybody on a plan. Yeah. Right, mm -hmm. um, exactly. So that, that mm. conversation has started. You see, my wife is paying for mine right now. Mm -hmm. And if I change, I might end up to pay for it. <laughs> so if you could include her one time, then she will come yeah. to the pain, you know what I mean? If you guys, when you leave from here, you could go to M. Ernesto's wife work. That would be great. <laughs> <laughs> Ernesto sent us. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's, it's all about um, making these services affordable for everybody. Um, like I mentioned earlier, we are in the process of continued expanding um, our network. So even customers in the rural areas are able mm -hmm. to enjoy the same level of service the same quality the same experience as us in the urban era so and to that we actually recently um offered fiber now in crooked tree and moscow so we continue you to go home now because you know go <laughs> <laughs> yes, if i can i can go <laughs> yeah, so we continue to look at new areas to you know bring fiber to the home and mm. have our rural customers also be able to benefit from having one of these digital one Bundles too. Sounds like a plan. Did you want the is the way to go? Yep. Yeah. It is. One bundle. One bundle. No, no hassle. hassle. Yeah. <laughs> Exceptional <laughs> value. You'll well, be hearing that a lot. The Marvel last said you bundle. You know, I'm just thinking this is going to make everything that we've been experiencing obsolete, you know, mm -hmm. because we're all gonna want to go with Digi One. Um, there is I'm 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 list I'm waiting for the catch, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's uh it's yeah, unbelievably amazing. Anything um, you missed offers. out? No. I think we covered, they covered it. They covered it. <laughs> yeah, they certainly covered it. Well, thank you, Stephen. And Make your way to the office. Coming in this morning as usual, brightening our day. And yeah. The wheel, you know. Um, I have a very exciting phone call to make after this. Blue. To order my my bundle. No, I go. Yeah. I, go I draw up the run. You can, can log on to livedigit.com/slash digi one. Mm -hmm. All the information you need about all the bundles are there. Mm -hmm. Scroll down, hit the sign up button. Easy. Easy. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Stephen Yearwood, uh, advertising and brand manager over there at Digi. And of course, you to you as well, Brittany, uh, solution, senior solutions manager. Um, you definitely brought great news to us this morning. Yeah. So. Thank you guys for having us. It's always a pleasure. In a few years, they won't come. We'll have AI robots. We'll don't say that. Do the show, don't you know? say that. No, don't say that. No, not, mm -hmm. not with DJ. No. <laughs> well, that's why I still drive to their to their offices and yeah. do my thing face to face. Okay. Yeah, I like when I stand up there and we do this thing. You just want a special yeah. care, man. Yeah, I, <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, it was a pleasure. I hope you all enjoy your weekend. Um, I think something tell me the Digi staff are very busy this weekend with some installations. And, and, and that something is very correct. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll be using their services a lot. They'll mm -hmm. be streaming the, the latest um, bicycle race, oh, yes. which is going to uh -huh. be quite interesting. Yeah, Yeah. so that, that's, just, that's, that's just proof of the reliability mm -hmm. of our network. Um, we, we, we're here, there, and everywhere. Mm -hmm. That's the best way to put it. Um, and, and we allow people to share that they are also here, there, and everywhere. Here, there, and everywhere. So. Keep in touch. Well, we say goodbye. Yes. Yeah, we want to say thank you also to our staff behind the scenes this morning. We have William on camera and controls, our producer, Miss Manuela Ayuso. Um, in Love of Him Studio, help me. Miss Karen. Miss Karen. Mm. Thank you, Miss Karen. I know here. I know here. Another year, man. So no. I wasn't sure who was in there. Um, and of course, to all of our guests who made it onto our show this morning, to educate, inform, entertain. Thank you all so very much. Um, I guess we'll see you all yeah. on Monday. Well, the activities are picking up a lot for the season. This is the eve of the Holy Week, mm -hmm. and do remember to be holy a little bit at least. <laughs> And uh, next week we'll be back 
and be careful, okay? And be kind to somebody today. Belize and beyond. Thanks for Thanks choosing, for choosing love. Love. Bye -bye. Good morning, Belize, and good morning. I say good morning, Belize, and good morning. And how are you this morning? Every morning, life goes to a